and we're live. And Will is back. <laughs> I am sorry for my long, um, I don't know, hiatus, Absence. I guess. <laughs> uh, it, it just seemed like every time I try to do go on other people's shows or even have somewhat of a life podcasting, it's like, Valley comes over. <laughs> And our final guest made it finally. Let's get him in here. All right, so oh, we're uh, we're doing today's episode is uh, seventy nine. Uh, what what are you watching? That that is the the topic. What has everybody been watching? <laughs> Movies, TV doesn't have to be current. It can be back in the forties, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, introduce our guest, Tom. How you doing? You've been on many times, and people love you, and you're back again. You. <laughs> do they love me, or do they love to hate me? That's that's really the question. <laughs> I don't know. It depends if you ask Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, it, it all the, whether they love me or or, or hate me depends on uh, what I tell you about the Batman today. I think is how it's going to be. And then, uh, of course, Leonard, you've been uh, on here a few times. How you doing, brother? Oh, I'm good. Happy Saturday, everybody. And then a familiar face over there, Drone Connor. How you doing? Oh, it's been a fun-filled day. Yeah. You you survived Chuck E. Cheese a couple weeks ago, huh? Uh, yeah. We the less said about that, the better. Um, <laughs> oh, no. I like the Batman, for those, right? For those who don't know, I have a nine-year-old daughter whose birthday is right after Valentine's Day. So we threw a Chuck E. Cheese party. Um. It, it, Chuck E. Cheese is not as bad as you think. It's just that if you like cardboard for pizza and um, flat stale soda, um, oh, no. the games are okay. You know, my daughter enjoyed playing the games with me. We really bonded on some of that. Um, just, you know, a, a middle-aged guy should not try to throw basketballs. Uh, he embarrasses <laughs> himself. Um, but, yeah, I did survive the Chuck E. Cheese. Um, barely. And then uh, a new friend of the show. Five-year alum. I worked there for five years. Yes. The less we talk about Chuck E. Cheese, the better. That's what Jerome said. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> Sam, my children have only been there once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also joining us, a new friend of the show, Shane. How you doing? I'm doing good, Brian. How are you and Nicole doing today? We're good. We're good. Good. Uh, so... Um, I mean, we can start with whoever wants to. I mean, Tom, I know you watch a lot of throwback stuff. So you want to talk about kind of what you've been watching? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I do. I I mean, I'm all over the place. I mean, for, for those that, that, that don't know, I, I write comics all the time. So um, my my head is always spinning with, with what it is that I'm trying to figure out how to write and so on. So when I get into the evening, I have to figure out a way to shut the brain down. And so... <laughs> I'll just I'll throw in movies or TV and watch Netflix or, or whatever it happens to be. But um, it has to be because of the storm. I, I also have to, I also try and find things, though, that, that relate to what I'm doing. Right. So if I'm writing horror, it's like, OK, let me let me at least pop a horror movie in or something so I can, <coughs> uh, you know, draw from it if, if, if need be. So um, I'm in the middle of, of writing Ursa Minor right now, which is vampires, werewolves. My lead character is uh, a were bear. Um, and so I've been watching a lot of odds and ends of horror movies, and and so last night was uh, uh, was Underworld, the first Underworld, um, which uh, I, I I like a lot. Um, was that the the unrated director's cut version? It was. It was the first time I'd seen like the the full whatever whatever it was, and and there was definitely a few things that I recognized. I was like, okay, I've never seen this before. None of it really to me like leveled the movie up. Like I think the movie existed fine on its own. Um, so sometimes these director's cuts seem to be like just stuffing footage in for the sake of just stuffing footage in, which is fine to see, but I'm just as happy to be, have it be like a deleted scene and I can just watch it, you know, deleted scene wise, but, um, it was fine. You know, it's like, uh, stripes, like stripes right now. There's a, there's a, a extended version of stripes that exists that basically anytime you watch it, it has all the this extra footage just stuffed into the movie. It's like it's kind. Of, it's almost like uh, Star Wars special edition, right? It's hard to find just the original cut of of stripes on its own, and the stuff that they put in is okay. It's fine, but it does kind of slow things down in a few scenes. So I, I'm I'm just as happy with that stuff as being. Look, here's what we took out. You can watch it individually on on its own and judge it for yourself. So. 
Yeah, that, that's the same thing because you mentioned Stripes. Uh, on the Blu-ray version of Stripes and Blues Brothers, you get both versions. Sure, and if they give you both, like you can watch it either way. That's cool. Um, but in this case, uh, on Underworld, like I didn't see an option. It was just, this is it. We've done it this way, so you get it this way. It was fine, but uh, nothing that they added in was was particularly like, ooh, that's awesome. So, you know, yeah. but it was good. I hadn't seen it in a long time, um, <laughs> and, and I was at a DVD place uh, uh, on a way to a con last weekend, and, and they were having, like, a gigantic sale. So it was like, buy three, get three free. So I was like, yeah, we're going to come out of here with a pile of stuff. Uh, and so they had, like, the first four as a box be set right for, over. like, ten bucks. <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'll buy four movies for $10. And, uh, yeah. you know, so now I'm going to, now I'll have a little mini binge of Underworld. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, I remember that first Underworld. Uh, and that is my favorite out of them. Uh, I mean, well, just seeing Kate Beckinsale on screen. Uh, in, I, in tight leather? Yeah. I mean, she could just sit there on a stool reading this, the phone book. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, was that like the first exposure of, no. of Kate Beckinsale? No. Um, Oh, I'm she, sure no. she was around before she then. Was in, but... She was in Pearl Harbor before that. Right. Yeah, well, but she wasn't wearing black spandex. so that doesn't No, count. but she was wearing a tight nurse's outfit. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay, wow. But yeah, I think that was her first, like, lead role. Like, <clears throat> truly, like, she's the star. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Hey, Shane, are, are you guys having a storm you were talking about? We are having a storm, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Indiana, my life. Our internet doesn't do well in storms. No, we have we only have one internet company in our town, and when it rains and pours down, we have the worst connection. Yeah, I, I hear you. We're we're stuck in the monopoly known as Spectrum. So yeah. that's what we're in, Spectrum, yeah. Uh so uh Let's see. Then, Shane, while we have you, do um, you want to go ahead and, and kind of talk about what you've been watching lately? Yeah. Um, again, like I was telling you last weekend, I work late hours. I work night hours. So when I come home, man, I've been movie wise, man. Um, I'm a huge Rocky fan. So I've been going through and rewatching all the. Oh. Oh. Oops. I guess uh, Oof. the the, the so, Amazon the Amazon snipers got him. So, <laughs> so let me ask this because he mentioned Rocky. Has anyone here seen the the Rocky Four recut that Stallone did last year? I have recut of Rocky Four. Yeah, no. It is no. about forty five minutes of of new footage. Um, it's been re edited. Uh, I think it's on like Am like I've been trying to find a way to find this thing, and it's like I think it's coming out on Blu ray at some point. But it was on Amazon for a while. You had to like rent it on demand or whatever wow um, but it's like it came and went and i never heard anybody talk about it so i, I was just curious so uh, hey shane you were talking about rocky have you been able to see the rocky 4 recut um no i haven't actually seen that one yet no but my buddy justin told me that because rocky 4 is both uh his and i's favorite rocky out of out of the films uh he said i definitely need to check it out so no again man i work so many hours like i barely see my family half the time so um, I just try to catch up on everything that I can, but we're actually going to go see the new Batman tonight. Um, it's been out for like a week or two now, I think, and I haven't even got a chance to go see that yet. So, hmm. uh, I, I I did hear a lot of people on my Facebook feed say that the Rocky Four recut was better. They like, I, I guess it was more <laughs> uh, more serious than <laughs> than the original cut. They cut the whole robot scene out, I guess. Um, is this the old man Rocky Four? Uh, this no Rocky Four is when he went to Russia. I thought, all right, okay. Yeah, I that was patriotic all, I Rocky. Believe, I believe yeah, there's a yeah, lot of Rocky. Rocky. There you go. yeah. There, there's a lot more sort of I don't want to call it political scenes, but just <laughs> like um, there's just more setup. I think is, is kind of how it plays. You know, once once Apollo Creed dies. Uh, and they're they're trying to figure out like okay how's Rocky gonna fight you know Drago and where there's a lot of bonus scenes in there um, so does yeah it, it's but it's supposed it, to be like 45 minutes of extra footage that does it have never extra seen. of the, the the tall blonde bimbo there that later showed up in Beverly Hills Cop to um, Brigitte Nielsen yeah she's yeah. absolutely part of it she's like the manager so yeah she's she's a big so we have more of, of her extra stuff yeah uh huh blonde not Sony. sure how I feel about that at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good or bad? That's why I'm trying to figure that out right now, you know. 
Uh, so what what Rocky films have have you seen so far that you've been rewatching? Um, I basically started from one and then I went all the way through five. Uh, five is definitely my least favorite one out of the original five. Um, and then I went through uh, just a couple of nights after work and I started watching some of the creeds. Um, I love Balboa. Uh, I love when he came back as old man Rocky and wanted to go one more time with Mason Dixon. Um, didn't win, but he didn't lose, in my opinion. You know what I mean? He just wanted to do it and get rid of the demons, as he said. So uh, four and, and is definitely has my the best favorite. line. Oh, absolutely. When he's talking to his son. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like that's just one of the best Rocky quotes I think of all time. I don't think he could top that one, honestly. Like that was just, yeah, that, that that's a quote that I use pretty much every day in my life, man. Awesome. And I just want to give a shout out, man, to my commentary uh, partner from AACW. What's up, Lenny? How you doing, Shane? Good to see you. Good to see you too, brother. Yeah, the, these two, they uh, are commentators for a uh, indie wrestling fed in, in Indy there. So, cool. Yeah. They're so, uh, show out of April 9th. So, yeah. it should be pretty wild. New venue, and hopefully, mm -hmm. get some, uh, some newer people checking it out. Um, Absolutely. Great match has already been, you know, signed. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So what about you, Willow? I know you've been in and out. <laughs> uh, well, uh, me and Joe just uh, hooked up our <laughs> new TV so that we can get uh, get our Roku going. Um, we're definitely getting rid of our cable because there's never anything good on. Um, unless, of course, you count uh, the Die Hard series. <laughs> um but anyway uh so yeah we've been what we hooked up paramount uh, paramount plus and we've been watching seal team um going through that series um and what, what was it that we were watching yesterday oh bull like we're we're starting to hey, go down the bull uh rabbit hole right now so and i think that's a good time to get caught up on that show because <clears throat> they just ended that show so yeah and uh yeah we're we're just kind of reconnecting with some of our uh, long lost uh favorites of tv shows as well so it's so that brings me to a question for everyone here uh when watching uh a tv series that's been out like i'll just give it an example like law and order that's been out for like 20 years or whatever do you wait for something that long to end and then just go back and watch it? Um, is it easier? Do you, whoever wants to answer this? I definitely think it's definitely easier when you uh, can go back and watch a series. Like I'm a huge walking dead fan and I hate having to wait Sunday to Sunday. Um, there for a long time. Like, I mean, I continue to watch them every Sunday, but I love to go back, you know, on Netflix. I think they're still on Netflix and go back and just rewatch them all. Um, one thing I've been really getting back into to piggyback off what Willow was saying about going back and catching up on old favorites. Um, I've been going back and I started from season one, episode one with Full House. Um, I've always been a huge Full House fan. Um, just love the whole like Bob Saget character of Danny Tanner. Um, and yeah, re yeah, rest in peace, like my wife just said about Bob. Uh, but yeah, I've been going back and watching a lot. I think I'm actually on season three now. Uh, so yeah, it's just fun, man, that, you know, like we got the Roku too. We got rid of cable. Um, there's just never nothing on cable. You're paying so much money for stuff that you don't even get to watch because there's nothing on the damn TV half the time. Yeah. So it's just nice to have, you know, HBO Max and stuff like that to go back and just watch all your old favorites and just binge watch them on your day off or on a late night. Yeah. And it's, you mentioned Full House. They don't make shows like that no more, man. They really don't. And like stuff like that and like Family Matters and things like that, stuff that I grew up on. Like, I don't know how many of you remember like TGIF and stuff like that way yeah. back in the 90s. Like, that was just some of the best sitcom TV that they could Married provide. Children. Yeah, Married with Children is one is probably my all time favorite show besides the Munsters. So I love going back and reading, just rewatching all that stuff. It's so much fun. What about you, Jerome? What what's on your uh, watch list that you've been watching? Well, we just watched Turning Red with Gwen. Hmm. Um, you know, she's nine years old and. She got really scared and upset about a couple of scenes, so um, we had to deal with that, you know. But it was a, it's a good film. I recommend it, especially to girls. Guys, it's not aimed at you. Um, 
So I also, though I suffer from anxiety, so when I have a panic attack, I basically turn on me TV and I watch Hogan's Heroes. Um, perhaps the greatest, stupidest show you've ever seen. <laughs> um, um, I watch that. Um, I've been watching. I've been. I'm. I'm hooked on Korean dramas right now. Um, I just. I, I've, I'm halfway through. All of us are dead, and the Eternal King. Isn't that the all of us is dead zombies, right? Zombies at the at a high school. Um, and 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 if you can get past the zombies, the metaphors of high school life, it it, it really resonates like what Buffy did for high school. Um, <clears throat> only it's a lot tougher type of school system than what we have here in the states. Uh, the Eternal King is a um, uh, alternate reality type of stuff where it's back and forth between our world and another universe. Uh, some interesting dynamics and s- potential storylines about what happens. Like I said, the um, the Korean dramas are really, really good, and I recommend people t- check some of them out. Yeah, the the Korean thing, I guess, is 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 the hot thing that's out right now. I mean, and they're good. That's the, the more important thing, you know. Um, yeah, you got to read subtitles, okay? Which means you got to pay attention. You know, I know I know people that watch shows; they just turn them on for background. They never really pay attention to them. This makes you pay attention to what the story is, and the stories are really solid. Yeah. What does everyone else think of the the Korean surgeons uh, here in the U.S.? Tom, you have a thought? I can't do it. <laughs> um, you know, not not that the movies are like perfect example. I think is like Train to Busan, right? It's like it's a it's a pretty good movie, but particularly I think in the horror genre. I can't read a horror movie. It takes me straight out of what's happening. For sure. Um, if it if it had been and and you know if it was dubbed, you know I don't know what the experience would be if it was dubbed either. It might be weird if it was dubbed, but um, I struggle with with that stuff. Like again, if it was just like a, a comedy or you know just whatever, like a drama or something. But to go into like the horror world where you kind of need to be immersed in what you're seeing. Uh, and hearing rather than like reading these words down here. I, I really, I, so I didn't hate train to Busan, but I was like, I knew that I wasn't engaged in it either. So, uh, but, but listen, I'm a Godzilla fan. I understand reading the subtitles. I know it's, I know how this works. Um, but I think it, I think for me, it, it's, uh, it's hard for, for certain genres. So I've just kind of thrown my hands up and said, nah, I'll, I'll find some other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Leonard. Well- I used ahead, to. Uh, no, no, no. Go ahead, Leonard. Okay. Thanks. Um, like, there's, there's no doc, new Doctor Who right now currently. So, uh, every now and again, I like to go back and watch some of the classic era stuff. And what's interesting is, it's like if you show somebody who is only from familiar with, say, from the Ninth Doctor, Christopher Eccleston, on, like in the modern era stuff, you know, they, they really can't. They don't always have the same sort of. Uh, enthusiasm when watching the classic era because you would have maybe these five or six part stories that are told, you know, and it's like, it's just a different pacing. It's a different vibe, a different budget, you know? And so um, while it's fun to watch and enjoyable, um, sometimes that's what you have to have to hold you over until like the new stuff comes out. I know, I think this is Jodie Whittaker's like last run as the doctor and then uh, Russell T. Davies is coming back to run the show and there's going to be a new doctor and there's supposedly one, because I guess they, uh, Davies Inc. some kind of deal with Sony. Um, they're trying to expand that universe. So I'm thinking they're going to try to, you know, give the Marvel treatment, you know. And um, I really think their best bet is a lot of the interesting stuff they put out through a big finish regarding some of the other doctors and some of the little crossovers they've done. I think if you could translate some of those, even if you just made them into animated features, I think that would be a good way to kind of capture a different aspect of that fandom. Um, well, they, they tried to do that with Torchwood, right? Yeah, you know, and it's like Torchwood had, you know, it had its uh, it had its first two seasons, and then there was a uh, five part series called Children of Earth, yeah. which was really really dark. And then um, the very last production they did, which I think is from twenty eleven, was uh, Torchwood Miracle Day, which was in conjunction with uh, the Stars Network here in the states, yeah. and um, it didn't hit the same way. It was a bit bigger, a bit more glam, and, and just. Yeah, but Miracle Day had a problem of release. I mean, a lot of people weren't didn't subscribe to Stars. Yeah, so a lot of the yeah. fans who would have watched it over in the UK didn't have that option to to see it immediately. And um, you know, having watched that whole entire Torchwood saga, I 
thought it was really great when they had John Barrowman come on uh, this past season of uh, Doctor Who. Only problem is now, the whole cancel culture got a hold of him and ended it after they were going after Noel Clark. Have you guys all heard about that whole debacle? Yep. No. Okay, so Noel Clark, who played uh, Mickey, he was one of the companions on Doctor Who. Um, supposedly, he's been sexually harassing people over the years on film sets and different projects he's worked on and directed and just known to like kind of be a not so nice guy in that respect and in the midst of them going through and digging up dirt what they can about him and talking to him at conventions there was an interview they unearthed where he was on a panel and he was talking about john barrowman captain jack harkness uh how he would hang dong on set as a joke to like make people laugh and so Noel's doing this whole two, three minute bit where he's using a microphone like a penis and he's like <clears throat> walking around with it and kind of tapping on people. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Mocking Barrelman. And, you know, there had been stories about that. I mean, this is, I mean, God, this we're talking like maybe the 2010s, maybe the, mm -hmm. those stories that come out. They said, you know, Barrelman would expose himself on the set. But it's like, I think he was really doing it for laughs just to kind of, you know, get a rise out of people. No pun intended. And um, <laughs> you use know, the tension as well. Yeah. <laughs> and so in the thick of all that, um, after they've gone after Clark for his behavior, then they started going, well, well you know, he talked about Barrowman doing that. So that's a shame. We need to cancel John Barrowman. So he lost some gigs doing that. They uh, they had a Doctor Who interactive uh, uh, experience, I think, over in Wales. They edited the Captain Jack parts out. He had a comic series where he teamed up with the 10th Doctor was supposed to come out. They shelved that. Um, a lot of the big finish audio that involved the Torchwood properties, now they're not using Captain Jack. They're using a lot of the other characters. Some of the ones that have died, they're continuing forward stories. And so they've just sort of omitted Jack from, from history now. And it's like, eh. it, you lose something in the way, in so much as, aside from the Doctor, um, Jack was one of the few characters really stood out and of course was large enough and grandiose enough to have his own spinoff so it's sad to see that because I feel like they're, they're totally cutting themselves off from uh, storytelling opportunities well Jack is one of the fan favorites and it's kind of sad to see that go the way it did and <clears throat> I, I love John Barrowman um, and he, he he I know that there was like a huge campaign he was trying to do to ensure that his character stays in the, in the light when it comes to a doctor who and yeah i just i hate seeing that go that way and i i would i would really like to see us you know continue with the story of captain jack harkness yeah um, well dave chapman just brought up something here this is Doctor Who. Time Fracture is in London. Burrowman will be back. He didn't get completely yes. canceled. No. Yeah. I mean, usually with the whole, I don't like to talk about the cancel culture stuff, but like once, you know, something happens and then something else happens and then they kind of forget about what, what that other thing that happened and it's kind of a cycle. I, I mean, guess it depends on how big and bad it is. Like, I can understand calling people out on their you know, mistakes, but let's consider the circumstances, you know, like let's just okay. give people the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes it's like, sometimes they don't mean it the way it's said. Like they try to do that with, um, uh, uh, Oh shoot. Um, castle brain part. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, uh, they they try to do that with the, Nathan know, Fillion. Thank you. Yes, uh, Nathan Fillion apparently was known as uh, well uh, to be was, a bully. He was hard to, yeah, he was hard to work with. They said, <laughs> which I don't know. He seems like he's easy to to work with on uh, on his new show on the Rookie. Uh, there's a good cast that seems th to have like. A good working relationship with him. Um, haven't heard any stories of him not being uh, being. See, I, I heard I heard the opposite of Castle. I heard it wasn't him, but her. Yeah. yeah. No, I've heard I've heard both. I've heard both had problems. Um, well, he, the, he the reality is, is a lot of this stuff 
we don't know. There's exactly. no way for us to know. Unless you're exactly. on the set, none of this means shit. Uh, you know, oh, he doesn't like him and she doesn't like uh, who cares? It doesn't matter. We're not there. Uh, okay. We can't really make any judgment calls on that kind of stuff. So yeah. it's it's just. I mean, I can under I can understand repeated bad behavior, but when people, you know, figure it out because somebody calls them out on it, that's one thing. It's like you can say. I mean, we, a matter of fact, had something happen at work that was just similar to this. It's like you know, if if it was only one time that you made a comment. But it's the consistent comments and the consistent bad behavior that gets you in trouble. That's what should get you in trouble. And not yeah. something from 20 years ago. Because a lot of people can grow and change over 20 years. You can tell me people don't change, but life shows you that you're going to have to figure it out. So yeah. I, I did want to find out about, because Linda was talking about Doctor Who. Is Hugh Grant actually going to be the new Doctor no, he. The, I guess the it was just a rumor. He was meeting uh -huh. with them, but the funny thing was back in I think it was ninety three, he did a comic relief short. It was called Doctor Who: The Case of the Fatal Death, and in it, it starts off with Rowan Atkinson as the eighth Doctor, and um, he ends up getting zapped, and so he regenerates. and And through the regenerations, they went through a handful of actors. Um, Hugh Grant was one of them, so you got to see Hugh Grant as the. I think at that point he would have been a tenth as far as that variation went. Oddly enough, it was written by Stephen Moffat. And then another odd thing about it was um, at the end of it, I think it was Joanna Lumley ends up being the doctor. So it <laughs> ended with a female doctor. So go for oh, it. I don't know, man. There's all this stuff that's saying that. No, Hugh Grant came out with a, um, he posted on his Twitter page saying, I am not going to be the new doctor. Move on. <laughs> Are you sure that's not a red herring? Because Andrew first Garfield, off, first off, for first one off, year, the BBC, the BBC could not afford him. The BBC couldn't afford him. Okay, remember he's still an A-list star. He has well, he hasn't done anything in a while. He's, he's still an A-list um, star. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, he's made. <laughs> hey, he's starred in his own films that have made a ton of money. Okay, the films he's in make money. So he, the BBC <laughs> will not afford him. And do you really think he's going to do television because of the grind of how long it takes, the how many hours you do? And let's television? be honest, the gentleman was a really good movie. <laughs> I second that. Well, I mean, most Guy Ritchie films are great movies, except the one it, with it, Madonna. <clears throat> yeah, I do think it's interesting though um, if you're looking at the whole. The rumor mill, the way it goes for the Doctor Who franchise, invariably they always end up throwing the name in of a, of a previous Doctor. Um, mm -hmm. I remember there was one rumor Matt Smith was supposed to be coming back. I heard like, that one, and I also David heard... supposed to come back. And, and, it's like, it, yeah. and then you hear, that, oh, well, that's going to be for the 60th anniversary. <clears throat> but then it's like, it got me thinking. It's like, you know, technically, you could cycle back through do uh, previous Doctors if they wanted to. I know in some of the other media, like uh, there were one of the novels and uh, there was one featuring the eighth doctor where he ended up, there was some kind of incident that occurred called a pre-generation where he turned in an earlier version of one of his uh, incarnations. <laughs> so, I mean. Oh, great. Then let's bring back Tom Baker. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Have Give him a walker, you know. Yeah, there you go. Or just CGI his face on the, some, you know, fit actor. <laughs> Um, it's, it is interesting though. Like he played the curator in that 50th anniversary episode. Yeah. And then, uh, there's a big finish. I think that's, if it hasn't come out yet, it will, but it's, um, a couple of different doctors in it and there is a curator in it, but it's actually going to be played by Colin Baker. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Interesting. It's so, interesting to see the, how they lean into that. I mean, I thought like when they were talking David Tennant coming back again, because, you know, repairing Russell Davies, I thought, man, um, well, maybe you could work in the Metacrisis Doctor if he comes back in Parallel Earth, merges with the current Doctor, because that dude has no regenerations, and you could probably move forward from there. But, you know, that's just my fanfic brain at work. Well, out of, out of the newer Doctors, I mean, I'm not, in, like, super into Doctor Who, but, I mean, I know who the people are. <clears throat> Tenet is probably one of the more popular ones, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Him and Smith. Him and Smith. And just last year, Christopher Eccleston finally stopped uh, sort of alienating himself from the franchise, and he's been—he's doing big Finnish audios now. He's actually well, lending so, his voice, so whether so he'll actually can, get 
Wasn't he losing camera. work for bad mouthing it? I think so. I would imagine. I mean, come on. If you're a if you you're some British filmmaker and you and you're a Hoovian and you can you know Eccleston's talking about I don't want to dip my toes in that pond the game. It's like, come on. What do you mean losing? He got to be Destro. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what what more do you want than to be Destro in a shitty G.I. Joe movie? <laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, what was it? He was in a Marvel film too. Yeah, he yeah, was, he uh, was in the Dark Thor. Elf. Yeah, yeah, Thor Throw two. Dark yeah. World. Yeah. All the yeah. all the good ones he's in. Gone in sixty <laughs> seconds. <laughs> and wasn't wasn't he also in the first season of Heroes? I that's that's going. I think out. so. I think so. He was in one of the seasons. You know. Oh, so I uh, posted this in a chat with Tom, and he thought it was a very interesting topic. Uh, and I'm going to show this chart, and I want to hear what everyone's uh, thoughts on it. So we talk about number one at the box office and people going to see uh, films and, and the legs that it has. So this is a chart from 2012, which since 2012 has not changed um, as I bring it up here. This is the number of weeks uh, these films have been. So we have Avatar and Ghostbusters at seven weeks. Porky's. Uh, Fatal Fatal is this the original Ghost? Yeah, original Ghostbusters, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah 84. And Back to the Future for eight weeks. Uh, Good Morning future. Vietnam was. Uh, and, and Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> Nine, Nine weeks. weeks. Home uh, Alone was a fantastic film. 13 weeks for Home Alone, or is that 12 weeks? 12, 12 weeks. Yeah, 12. Uh, yes, 13 weeks. weeks for Tootsie and Beverly Hills Cop, and then Beverly 15 Cop, weeks for Titanic. Axel Foley, man, Beverly Hills Cop, like that. Great. Yeah, I didn't even know. I like the second one better. Beverly Hills Cop, but yes. I didn't know it was See, number one that long. When it came to Beverly Hills Cop, uh, three was, uh, I liked the original, but three was probably my, my favorite. I liked when he went to Wally World. Never, never seen three. Three was just oh, fun, three. man. It was just funny. I liked. I loved two. I, I, I thought two, two was, was good. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Tom, uh, you have thoughts on on this? You thought it was a very interesting uh, look at uh, how entertainment has changed. Yeah. Well, I mean, you look at that list. It, it's mostly 80s movies. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's there's yeah. like one 90s movie. There's like one from Avatar is the most recent, 2009. Um, and it's it's the, the fact that nothing has changed since 2009 uh, kind of tells you basically that uh, we're, we're at that point, we're in the middle of we're not in the middle, but at that that starting point of just endless every other week, we have a new something large yeah. scale in order well, to knock MCU something start? off. When yep. the MCU you know. start? 2008. Hey. There you go. Uh, yeah. Some, I think it was, a nine, it was 9, 10, somewhere in there. Somewhere yeah. in that 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 realm, 9, mm -hmm. 10. Um, now, it wasn't, it wasn't as, it was, it was just Iron Man at that point. It yeah. wasn't like, yeah. you know, over and over and over again. But we started to grow into this this point where uh, even something lasting four weeks is is difficult uh, because you have it not not just Marvel, but just in general. Um, there's there's just tons of blockbuster things that uh, even if they even if ultimately they don't become blockbusters, they were big enough hype machines to knock off whatever was number one uh, yeah. for that that particular period of time. Mm -hmm. And then you know, like we were talking about Spider Man, I was like, no way, Spider Man has to have been. I was about to bring up Spider Man, you know, yeah. yeah. But he said, uh, Brian said that Scream knocked it off uh, for a week, and then Spider Man came back around to number one. So while it became number one for a long period of time. It did have a bump because a, a well, a, you Titanic, know, something knocked it off. Titanic got knocked off of um, the the number one for two weeks and then came back. Lost in Space came out, knocked Titanic off for two weeks, and then Titanic came back for like three or four <laughs> more weeks of number one. Right, but it had it also had this, the streak uh, mm -hmm. of fifteen. So yeah, you know. but that's yeah that that was what I was saying. It's like we're in this point now where it's like there's so much content, particularly when we get out of the pandemic mode of, of films um you know if, if something has a nice run of like four weeks and then something new comes out that new thing is going to knock off that four that four week thing easily <clears throat> even if then allows the the four week thing to come back around but some uh, of those films way. some of those films that would be 
you know, that last, uh, they're starting to move towards the streaming services. Instead also of being of in the yeah, theater. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which so, that does make it nice though, that you can sit like in your living room with your friends, you know what I mean? And you can drink beer or whatever you want to do, you know, make your own food. But I mean, I'm old school with that, man. I'm yeah. classic. I, I, I want to go to the movie theater with my friends and family and I want to get a bag of popcorn and some soda pop and, and I want to sit there and I want to watch it, man. I want, I want it to be loud. You know what I mean? Like, but I don't want my phone I, ringing, you know, my, my phone or my kid running in. Saying, right, Daddy, right. I got to yeah. do this. Or well, whatever. you have that at the theater too. Everybody's on their phone and their kids True. are running around like, I know. Like, and it's so crazy. Cause it's like, it's just, uh, like, I don't mind taking like, I guess the, I guess it's called like the pre movie photo. Cause like I do that too, you know, it's cliche, whatever, <laughs> but Hey, we're checking this film out, you know, but I'm the guy that puts my phone on silent. And then, you know, my wife and I, we went and saw the new scream and, you know, we were, we thought we were going to be the first or, or the only two in there. And then all of a sudden, you know, it filled up uh, the last couple of seconds and you had all these teeny boppers and stuff on their phone. You had these kids down there like switching seats constantly. And I felt I couldn't focus on the film because, you know, these kids are just causing a ruckus, you know, a few rows down from us. And I'm like, pick a seat, sit in it and just enjoy the film. If not, why did you go and spend $17 for a ticket? Plus your popcorn and soda pop, like just sit down, you yeah. know, like that's the only thing that bugs me about going to theaters nowadays is like, we're in this new, like I'm from the eighties, you know what I mean? So like going to the theater was something special. Like you get to see your favorite film, you know, you get your favorite snacks from the concession and you sit down and you actually enjoy the film, you know? So nowadays when we go, it's like, you got all these teenage kids running loose and it's just, it, it, it I guess call me an old man. I mean, maybe I did it too. I don't know. But then I don't think I did because I I enjoyed sitting down and watching the film for what the film was. And it's funny because I actually did joke with him on that day where he was just like, can these teenage kids just sit down? And I was just like, I mean, we're just getting old. We're, this is exactly what our parents did to like our generation, the same thing we're doing to but yeah, I, generation. Like my wife said, I was getting heated because I'm like, I can't enjoy the film that I paid money for. That I work my you butt. Gotta, you you got to just tell them to shut the hell up. You yeah, gotta, exactly. That, that, literally, you Trust just me, I want to do it. So I like, keeps me at bay. Like I remember like, there, there was a time. Thing, just calm down, watch the movie, and I'm like, no, you slap them in the, the head. No, 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 you slap them in the head. They're, they're, I remember I was at the X Files, and there was two kids in front of me, and they were jacking around and jacking around. I'm like, look, it's the trailers. It's gonna be cool, whatever. They're jacking around. Yeah, and jacking sure, around. do it on the trailers. I don't care. As soon as the trailers were over, and the 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 Fox thing came up and they were blah, 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 blah. I was like, okay, look, you are done with this or I'm going to get you thrown out of this place. Like I literally just leaned over their shoulder. Like you're done. Shut up or I'm getting you thrown out. And that was it. They were done. They yeah. were like, Oh, okay. I think the biggest shocking factor for me that really brought me back to uh, the old school film days in like a theater was when we went and saw Spider-Man and when Toby walked through the portal, um, the, I mean, it was silent in the theater. And once Toby Maguire walked through as Spider-Man, as Peter Parker, I mean, the whole crowd was like, oh, oh, my God. I mean, it was a reaction claps that just, yeah, like, claps who, went nobody off. Nobody claps like, anymore at movie theaters. I'm yeah. like, I'm a they clapper. Do. And that just yes. made me feel so happy in that in that little two second moment because I'm like, yes, this is what it's about, you know. I mean, that movie theater was packed and it was so silent. Everybody was devoted to the film. And when Toby walked through, and then when Andrew Garfield walked through, I mean, it just, I mean, it, it just way, erupted. Spoiler, nobody's seen it. But yeah, hey, listen, it was, you know, that's the same reaction that happened when when Cap picked up uh, Thor's hammer in Endgame. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 People, people lost yep. their minds in my theater. Okay. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's it's that 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 way. You know, um, are you going there now? Yeah, I'm starting to think that, that there's cute. fewer of those moments, though. Like with with our culture having so much information at our fingertips, like nothing is really sacred anymore. And I was one of those people that got my ass chewed out because I le I I spoiled it for someone, and I'm like, dude, like it was fan art, dumbasses. Listen, like the last two <laughs> films that I remember the population keeping quiet on the big reveals was um, what's the one where he sees dead people? Um, Six Sense. Six Sense. Six Sense. Sense. Yeah, with Bruce, yeah. Will uh, Bruce Willis, right? Yeah. And yeah. the other one, which was even more of a big reveal. How many of you remember the Crying Game? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, that was an even bigger but shocking those, reveal. Those were also very pre-internet things. Yeah. Nowadays, yeah. it's it's you know someone yeah. sees a movie and they're immediately <laughs> on on their phone afterwards and talking well, about whatever they saw. I uh, I feel bad for Uncharted because that movie could have been a lot better than it was, but Uncharted? at the same time, I uh, me and my husband saw it the uh, last week, and. I was the only one who saw and uh, noticed that Nolan North was in the movie <laughs> out of everybody in the theater. And I'm like, I, I'm like, Joe, 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 Joe. He's like, what? I'm like, Nolan, Nolan North. And he was like, who? I'm like, the guy who talks for the character in the game. <laughs> what was that same. other film? Was it like the, uh, I know the sixth sense had like such a great twist ending. Um, I remember watching that and I was just like, I, I love that. Um, what was the other one? Uh, the Was it The Others? The mom yeah. and her kids? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, a good that really cool the twist end. ending. But nobody, nobody's, like, still talk, nobody's talking about The Others today. I mean, you talk, you, you actually say The Others. People I don't think go, people what? understood it. No, nobody, nobody, nobody understood, yeah, nobody it understood the others. It's it, it's one of those movies that you got to go back and then you'll be like, oh, God damn, that's awesome. Yeah, you got to watch that like two times. Twice. Yeah, exactly. You see it the first time, and I think like your adrenaline kicks in, and you're just like, "Holy shit!" That that actually okay. So I see the twist, and then yeah, like you said, Tom, you got to go back and uh, watch it again to kind of like truly appreciate what they were trying to do in the. Film. I mean, that was a creepy film. Let's not kid ourselves. Oh, okay. it was absolutely. Her kids were creepy enough by the. Oh yeah. Like I yeah, mean, but I love I love creepy. Nicole Kidman as an actress, and man, she creeped the hell out of me in that film. What Batman was she in? She was in Val Kilmer's Batman, right? Yes, yeah. she was. As a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved her. I lo And then she was in um, the, the racing movie. Um, Days yeah, of Thunder. Talladega Nights, yeah. or what was it? Days, no, Days of, of Thunder. Thunder. Days of Thunder. Or, there you go. Days of Thunder. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. wasn't Days she also in that Western one that Cruz also did? Um, uh, far and away. Was, oh, she was far, far and away yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So, I've noticed like her career is just kind of doing like I know when the last couple of times we went and seen a movie in the theater, she's doing like the AMC uh build up to the film, like yeah. kind of thing. And I'm like, no, you have to see films and now you're doing this. Okay, so uh, so explain this to me. Why do you have a commercial for the theater that you're currently sitting in? Thank you. <laughs> thank I you. Shot, 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 spider -Man. I'm like, oh my god, like why are you doing this for the AMC theater that you're actually in? Like no, I can you. understand yes. if I'm watching if I'm watching the commercial on TV, you know, yes, whatever. Yes. I get that. Hey, get, get butts there, in yeah. seats, right? But yeah. you're already your butt's already in the seat. Thank so you. why do you need to promote that? You know, is, is it that you think I'm not gonna come back and watch another the another right? film? Listen, I'd rather watch an AMC commercial than another one of these stupid car commercials with the cat. Like just stop <laughs> with the car commercials. <laughs> yeah, who's, who's, I don't guy, I don't need any of this. Is it mo is it is it Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. I am sick of Matthew him McConaughey. at do, doing commercials. Driving like what the Cadillacs or something? Yeah, yeah. I love how they do oh, car commercials nowadays. They don't even like try to promote the car or tell you about the car. It's just some famous actor driving the car. I'm looking at it. I'm going. You know, you know like, what? Are you going to tell me about the car at least? Like, I, I'm looking at him and I'm looking at the driving. I'm looking at it, he's in the tailored suit and I'm going. Yeah, I can't afford any of that. I no, can't even no, afford no. to look at that car. His okay? watch costs more than my house. You know Thank what I mean? You. Like, Thank you. You know, and who who drives? Okay, when they when when they do some of these sports car things, they show these these closed roads, and you're going, yeah, no, not around my house. Yeah, you don't get to drive yeah. like that. You know, around I my house, in a neighborhood, so no one's yeah. driving like that down my yeah. road. Like, I'm trying to think of another one that had that twist ending. It was like it was at a house, and they went like him and his wife and his kid went to a different country, and they went to this house, and it was a twist ending, and he was like. This house, like, kind of like took over him, and I can't remember. Oh, you're talking about the, the Kevin Bacon film? Is that the one you're talking about? I think so. And he's like it in that follows. study, and it the, oh, like that door yeah. opens, but then that door's not there. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. It's the uh, what, 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 what was that film with Kevin Bacon? It just came out, I think, last year. Um, I, think so. I don't know. I can't oh, watch dude. Kevin Bacon years ago. Him and his family went to. Uh, they were. It was like some other country, I think. Maybe I should have left. You should have left. That's that what it was. was yes. Yeah. Now that was now when he, um I love Kevin Bacon. Um, he's a great actor in my opinion. Um, loved him in the 80s. Uh, Footloose was just it, it will always be in my top 10 favorite films. Yeah. Um, 
But man, when he did, uh, I believe it was Stir of Echoes, when he found the little girl buried in his basement and he just like lost his mind. <laughs> oh, I, I, I thought that film was, again, another little twist ending. Like, loved that film. Loved, loved what he did with that. Never saw the second one. I, I heard a lot of stuff about it. I never checked it out, but. Kevin Bacon's best movie is still Friday the 13th. Come on, guys. <laughs> oh, really? yeah, he gets, uh, no, no, I'm going to disagree with you. The, like the arrow or the harpoon through the, the throat. The, you know, whole scene, quick, quick the whole silver. scene where he's watching the storm yeah. come in and they're flashing lights in his face. It's so real. It's so real. Come on. Quicksilver was far more intense. <laughs> did, did you guys see, movie did you guys see The Darkness was, uh, with Kevin Bacon? Film. No. No, I've never seen The Darkness. <laughs> That, that's a 2016 like that. film. You, you guys have it all wrong. Tremors is the best movie. Tremors. <laughs> Tremors. Uh, Tremors 1 and 2 is really awesome. After that, I, I've watched them all. I've seen them all. But, man, I was so much just going through. Like, But Tremors was awesome. Tremors was a great, great film, I thought. What, what about Hollow Man? Hollow Man was cool. I liked Hollow Man. Yeah. yeah. Creepy kept it. making in that. Yeah, I, think, I, I think he was creepier in that one than he was in Stir of Echoes. Mm-hmm. Friday yeah, uh, Friday the Tom says. Yeah, I was I was gonna say the uh, the new uh, Invisible Man movie that came out a couple oh. years ago re reminded me of Hollow Man. I didn't okay, remember yeah. any Invisible Man movie coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nobody does. <laughs> nobody does. <laughs> well, there was that whole thing uh, a number of years ago about Hardcore. the Dark Universe, where Universal was going to reboot. Oh all yeah, their, that disaster. All of their monsters, and they uh -huh. had this really amazing lineup set in place. Yeah. With uh, mm -hmm. they had the Mummy, then it was going to be Bride of Frankenstein, then it was going to be Hol uh, Invisible Man. It, they had all this stuff lined up. I'm like, holy goddamn! They were even showing little like hints of things. Like, what was the yeah. film that had the creature's hand in the jar? They were walking yeah. through the like. Well, that was, yeah, the Mummy was the setup piece, and it, yeah, it had yeah, exactly. Dr. Jekyll yeah. in it they, they and all that kind of stuff. Tom Cruise in the Mummy. There was their. I mean, that should have been red flagged right there. That was their downfall. That's when it went like that. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at this going, no, uh, uh, not Tom Cruise. No, that, and not not believable in the least well they i had think a the best cast. tom cruise film he's ever done was minority report <laughs> if you, you know, remember the monsters universe they yeah they cast uh, tom cruise i mean he wasn't the mummy though that's the thing no. he was just but the, that, that's the, not character. the point <laughs> but they cast everyone they uh i think it was deadline or hollywood reporter somebody had the cast photo and johnny depp was part of it uh and it was russell crowe Yep. Uh, and then uh, what's her face that you hate? Um, Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. <laughs> <laughs> like the, what's her face that you hate? And I'm like, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Angelina Jolie was cast as the bride, yeah. bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. That would have ruined my life. I'm just okay. But would she have, but would she have had? Would she have had the big bouffant hair? I have to agree. You know, I want to know that if she was going to be the bride of Frankenstein, I want that big hair. Bride of you know, Frankenstein that, was that the first horror hair. film I ever saw as a kid. And then next was Child's Play. So Bride of Frankenstein will always hold a special spot. But Nicole, I, I agree. That that would have I, I, I don't I don't that. see I don't see Angelina Jolie doing the Marge Simpson hair. The okay. Mar I like it. The Marge Simpson hair, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was well, no, isn't it Marge here. Simpson doing the Bride of Frankenstein hair? I don't because know, I know. Bride of Frankenstein <laughs> had it first. Yeah, that had yeah, it first. She did. Yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna say, Lynn? Oh, the um, well, a couple of things. One, um, <clears throat> as far as cameos that people kind of completely missed. I remember when Ant Man came out, I saw Garrett Morris his brief cameo. I was like, oh my god, because a lot of everybody realized. That he played Ant Man in a Saturday Night Live sketch back. Yeah, in I remember Saturday Night Live. I just I did not see him on that film. Yeah, he was, um, like, he, was a, like, he was a cab driver. Old real man quick. in a cab. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to go back and watch that now. Yeah, and then uh, you know, it's he like was they a cab did driver. That and like, yeah, and what I thought was also interesting was it's like okay, so you had Spider Man No Way Home. You brought back Tobey Maguire. You brought in Andrew Garfield. You guys couldn't have. Like throwing in a brief Nicholas Hammond cameo, you know. I mean, he was really. Oh no, no Nicholas Hammond has came back and said that he was going. He would have gone, but they never asked him. Yeah. What? So, yeah. He like, didn't want to the the Listen, that movie was so convoluted to begin with. We didn't need more <coughs> Spider Man. Like, we had more than enough Spider Man in this movie. Which is interesting that he came out after the film that he wanted to be in it, but for years he denied his, that he did the TV show. 
Okay. Well, listen, he, everybody here is coming out of the woodwork. Even, There's even a clone. Uh, Kirsten Dunst is like, I'll be Mary Jane again. And, and I mean, everybody wants a page. Yeah, it's the money. Everybody they wants want the cash. Paycheck. Because they surprise. realize that the fans may have wanted, and they're they're going to cash in on the fans. Well, yeah. what's Kristen Dunst I'm, done since you know Spidey? You know that sort of thing. You know. Well, and yeah. it's keeping themselves. I love the Nothing, so nothing, is nothing that is the paycheck of the superhero movie for sure. Exactly. I don't think anybody can play Gwen Stacy better than Emma Stone did, in my personal opinion. Oh, I think she she's, she's also like, come, like, come back. She's like, I want to be, I want to be Gwen again. I'm like, I don't think that was a Gwen character. They didn't feel Gwen. Are old men allowed to have crushes on young girls like that? Sure, why not? I, yeah, okay, if, if so women can have crushes on old men, yeah, she, was, it's, yeah. okay, she, she wasn't <laughs> under age, so I guess you can have a crush on her because she was legal age. So yeah. <laughs> she was in her mid twenties at that time. Just take a few Wagner. I mean, like. He, Okay. Okay. I'll do, I'll get the I'll get the velvet smoking jacket. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll touch you get, off if you were in the interview with the part. But so I, I have a question for the panel. Um, I'm sure you maybe you've seen this and there. Maybe it came and went. But I guess they're doing a Renfield movie, and I don't know if that's going to be tied into that whole Universal. I thought they did that uh, already. Thing. But not. Nicolas Cage. Is going to be playing Dracula. Have you seen the picture? <laughs> yes, oh, I have seen the picture. come back and do something. Ridiculous. I did see the photo. He's so tiny now. Like, he looks deadly sick. Like, he and looks what creepy. Look like as Dracula. Yeah, exactly, yeah, as Dracula. Yeah, yeah, and I think, on, yeah. Have well, listen, you guys. Nicholas Cage announced why he did all the crappy films he did. Okay. Yeah, to get out of debt. We all knew that. Yeah, debt yeah, and sure. to keep his mom out of <laughs> the sure. hospital. You got to take you know? the paycheck, man. You, know, you gotta admit, you gotta admire the man. He's honest about why he did it. Yeah, yeah. You know? But yeah, Garmin, I, Garmin I thought 60 they, seconds was cool though. That was one of my favorite movies. I thought I thought he did, they'd already done a Renfield film. I thought they'd already done one a long time ago. Yeah. The the Nicholas I have Cage never heard project. of a Renfield film. Renfield's been in all the Dracula movies. But, yeah, you know, yeah, pretty much. It's like Tom Waits uh, played in one of them. The the Nicholas the massive Ch doubt of unbelievable talent or whatever. That's the Nicholas Cage movie that's, I'm looking forward to, where he plays himself. <laughs> I saw he's, that. Rad. He's he's hired to go to uh, a private island to do a birthday uh, as like a guest for this this rich person who happens to be like a drug cartel person that he doesn't know. So he's going there for the birthday, and then he gets hired by the FBI to be the inside man. Yeah. So yeah, this is gonna be all the trailer's out. Uh definitely look at the trailer. Um yeah, I saw the trailer in the theater. So it could be funny or it could be absolute nothing. I it could be like the Van Damme movie. I mean, that's like all of Nicolas Cage's movies, right? It's either like, wow, this is really good, or like, what the hell is this? All right, unpopular yeah. opinion here. I like the first Ghost Rider film. It was good, yes. The it's first one was good. Okay. Yeah, okay. I agree. Come on! I've seen I mean, rumors the that they want that he wanted to come back to do Ghost Rider one more time, like when they do the remake reboot. I'm sorry for being late, but oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Now, how much of that is? It looks though? sweet though, man. That's a sweet velvet crush jacket. Oh, I, I want that jacket, man. That's a great yeah. jacket. He's got the medallion around the neck. He looks like that traditional. Yeah. Dracula he's, even got, he's even well, got the haircut. Yeah, go see me it's, yeah, 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 exactly. It's Without supposed Nicholas to be Cage, very he Bella. Wouldn't have Johnny Depp to this day because Nicholas Cage was the one who got him into uh, Friday the Thirteenth, or not Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, not on Elm Street. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I love, I, I love it. Like I, I love the look. Love the nails. Love the rings. Got the gold on. Oh, yeah, perfect. That awesome. That is Bella right there, man. He's yeah, that looks, love, that looks like a Dracula. That yeah. Oh yeah. That looks like Dracula to me. Don't look into his eyes. You'll get hypnotized. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Dracula's pimp pound is strong. Uh, okay. <laughs> I heard, now listen, uh, listen, the greatest Dracula of all time was Love at First Bite. Oh, um, yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. No, yeah, Love at First Bite. Was that George? That was George uh, Hamilton. George right? Hamilton. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah the, tan the tannest Dracula ever. <laughs> Back in the seventies, George Hamilton was darker than me. <laughs> the book my feed was cutting, and now I heard you guys. I heard one of you say something about the Blues Brothers. That is in my top five. I love it. There was there was an original theatrical release of the Blues Brothers that only lasted a week, and in it you get the entire John Lee Hooker scene 
uh, at the beginning. Yeah, they later him cut him out where you're only getting him when he starts the song um, in the everything afterwards. Uh, I've got that original release. And that's the main that's the main selling point right there. It's just the John Lee Hooker song, you know. Yeah. And another great film too. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but uh, all the <laughs> National Lampoons uh, vacation movies love those. Um, Christmas Vacation, we watch that endlessly um, <laughs> during Christmas season. So uh, I love Clark we play Griswold. Every day. I mean. When he when he blows his gasket, man. When Clark blows his gasket and Christmas vacation, you know we're gonna have the hap hap happiest damn Christmas. You know, like I love I love the vacation films. I thought those were just I love Chevy Chase, man. Like that guy was he yeah, was Chevy I mean, Chase, was, man. I mean that's what he was alive, like. Uh, even 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 Vegas vacation, yeah. like it gets a real bad rap, but I love Vegas vacation. It was a good I think film, right? Yeah. Movie. I think it's really good. Um, I mean, his kids went off, and I mean, his son, you know, Rusty went off and was winning. Well, he won four vehicles for him to drive home in, and he's part well, of like he goes, he becomes a, he becomes and, Mr. Papa Giorgio. I mean, he gets a fake yeah, ID, yeah, and man. like, I mean, it's fantastic. It's what's, you know, what's his name? Yeah, like my wife was saying, Jason, the the uh, oh no, uh, Ed Helms plays Rusty in the in the new vacation yeah. film like yeah. I, I even liked that one i thought it was good i thought it was a great cast christina applegate uh kelly bundy <laughs> much love to her and then ed helms i'm a huge ed helms guy uh love everything he's done uh i thought that movie was well done and then the fact that they that you had the appearance by the mom and dad at the end yeah you know you got them and i thought that was really cool and then obviously they pull out of the garage with the classic uh griswold vacation wagon so i thought that was really cool I think the Griswold family was in, in fl a state of flux, temporally speaking, because you notice like the wife and husband stayed the same, but the children always kept changing. <laughs> always change. And yeah. what was the one where I felt like the uh, because Rusty was always the older one of the two, but in Vegas, mm -hmm. or wait, no, 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 it was Euro Vacation where I felt like the daughter was older than Rusty. Yeah, in 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 the, in the Vacation reboot, um, they're looking through the photo album, and it's. The kids, the old kids, and they change yeah. every time. And, and Rusty's looking at him like, "Oh, I remember all of this." Yep, yep. <laughs> Everyone is the old kids. Yeah, it's yeah. Really it was very clever. Very, yeah. very clever. Yeah. Now, uh, now it, there's there's only one child who came back to play the same role again. This is a very odd question. I don't know if any of you know the answer to this. One of the kids came back and played the same character again. Anybody know? No. Oh, I forgot. I never watched the film, so I can't really say. <laughs> <laughs> there was a spin-off movie. Okay. Christmas I think it's called Christmas Vacation 2, with uh where it, it follows Randy Quaid and, and his family. And Dana Barron comes back as Audrey. Okay. Oh. Is this, never even is heard this, of is that. This, is this a film that basically pushed Randy Quaid over the edge into insanity? Could be. It's terrible. <laughs> It's terrible. I'm not even going to tell you to watch it, but uh, yeah, I, I was like, wait a minute. I know that name. Oh my God. She's Audrey. So yeah, it's the only Another one that ever got a... was, was Dutch. Do you guys remember Dutch? with yes. Oh, yeah. oh, I love Dutch. Oh, I love Dutch. That is a good movie. Great from beginning to end. What's Opening the, scene to ending scene. Was perfect. What's the song? I can't think of it at the moment. Oh, he's singing Hank Williams. I'm so lonesome. Yeah. I could cry. And it's just the way Ed O'Neill does it in the car. Was just oh phenomenal. I'm a huge Hank Williams fan. So when Ed O'Neill sung Hank Williams, I'm so lonesome I could cry in during the car. And he bought the, he bought the nudie cards and he got all the fireworks and he tried to have this kid like have a great trip. And I thought Dutch was awesome. I love the cover. Uh, the kid was you know duct taped and tied to the hockey stick and just I loved it. I thought Dutch was awesome. Yeah, Dutch is. Uh... I, I need to rewatch Dutch. Unpopular <laughs> opinion. It was the only role that I didn't mind. And I think Ed O'Neill is actually in a, it. he's actually a really good actor. I, I mean, I remember role. I remember watching Ed O'Neill on a summer um, filler TV show. It was when they remade Dragnet, and he was yeah. Joe Friday. Yeah, okay. and that was I mean the first four episodes were really good. After that, they kind of lost their focus. But it was it was actually that was I remember Ed O'Neill doing some of that. Yeah. And you know, I just want to add too, really quick. I love that we're getting all these spinoff shows of you know all these old sitcoms coming back. When the hell are we going to get married with grandchildren? 
Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I know, right? It's like all the actors have said, hey, we will do it. Sign us up. I mean... I mean, you don't want to say never because we live in the age of nostalgia now, right? True. I mean, it's like true. at some and all point, that's some, again. some producer somewhere is going to be then? like, we can do this. Marcy Darcy. Uh, <laughs> Rose or Marcy Darcy? Like, they just signed on to do uh, another round of uh, stuff with uh, Katie Segal and the original and the cast of. Um... I'm sorry, my brain is not working today. Um. Drink more coffee. You need to jump. Yeah, it. no, go <laughs> ahead. You guys talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, for oh, Futurama. Thank you. Yeah, they're they're yeah. rebringing back. Yeah. They're bringing back Futurama on Hulu. You know, so yeah. I don't know why. I, I that feel be like what, this the second return the children you know? is something that's like almost too easy. Yeah, uh, it's too easy. But also remember that show was just Romance. was canceled out from under them too. Oh, they yeah. had no clue that they were done, and it was just like, oh yeah, by the way, you're done now. Uh, yeah. Goodbye, Married with Children. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but if you're gonna do Married with Grandkids, the real question is: Is who's grandkids? You know, which oh, it's one gotta of those be buds. buds. It has to be buds. I don't know about Kelly. that. Well, the, the everybody twist, the twist like, to that would be that Bud has a bunch of kids and Kelly. That's has the none. Grandmaster B, that's right the there. The twist. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. would all assume that Kelly would have all the kids, the illegitimate absolutely, kids. Absolutely, yeah. But you you flip the script, and it's Bud's got eight it's kids, Bud. and she yeah, has absolutely. Oh, and I would on. expect hey. Bud to have like at least four kids, like yeah, three girls if, and a boy but, or something. You know, but, but like is, is it going to be like you know that that Bud's his exes are like super hot, or are they going to be like you know dog face? Oh, they got to be super hot. Oh, they got to be super hot. I don't it's know. Be during like the Grandmaster B, like he grows up and finds out that he impregnated. These girls would during his grandmaster B phase, and you know, twenty years later, he's got kids. You know, like. <laughs> I, I mean, test. okay, we we have also the the adopted son. Seven. <laughs> yeah. Even... yeah, the less said about that disaster, the better. <laughs> that was here. I think I think Tom may be secretly writing this, uh, and <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny anything. Can we just have a spinoff with the dog? <laughs> I was just gonna say, <laughs> there is the dog. How many, how many puppies did he off? create? Didn't One of my favorite episodes off? of Mirror Children was where an owl, like, like Peggy, wanted Al to neuter Buck, and Al just he just couldn't do it. He didn't want to do it. He's like, "That's my dog, man. I can't do it." Like, here's Buck out here impregnating every dog in the neighborhood, you know. And <laughs> no, poor Al, favorite. you know, he's suffering from it, and yeah, my yeah, I, living favorite. vicariously through his dog. Yeah. yeah, my two yeah. favorites are the Santa, the Santa that crashed on the roof. <laughs> yeah, when they killed yeah. Santa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when he was the bad to the bones. Yeah. Oh yeah, every time, every time he got to a bar fight, bad to the bone, George Thurgood came on. And I love when he took Bud to the uh, strip uh, to the nudie bar for the first time, and he was teaching I love, I love, I love Labor Day. I, trick. I love Labor Day. Labor Day, yes. When he puts on the gear, and I mean that is Al's day, Labor Day, and oh yeah, oh yeah. He gets all excited watching her clean the um, watching her clean the table, table the picnic oh, table. No. Like everything that that Peggy wanted from Al, she got in that one episode, but she hated every second of it. Like she was miserable. She wanted Al to go to the bedroom every two seconds, and then when he finally, I, I love how he was like. Just watch her, and his head would roll, and he was just so into her. Yeah, and then the, what they what they used um, Marcy Darcy's uh, grandmother, what, aunt, aunt, aunt Tuli's ashes or something. Yeah. Yes. Oh my god! And she uh, it was like the best burger, and like was it? Well, no, she wasn't Darcy yet. She was still a rose. She was with Steve, and Steve found out that and he's like, oh, what a great burger! burger. And he, he ate the hell out of that burger, and it was like Aunt Trudy or something like that. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's funny. Uh, My... Is there? I was gonna say, is there a show uh, that hasn't been rebooted or remade that you guys think is like ripe for for a remake that could actually work and be better than what it was? Maybe a show that wasn't as popular. Is there something that you guys can think of? Well, there's lots of them. There's lots of them that yeah. that are out there. Just a matter of question is is how do you how do you do it? I mean, you look at a lot of the the films that turned that took like 1970s shows and turned them either into comedies or to serious. I mean, nobody talks today about the Miami Vice movie with Jamie Foxx. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, but everybody talks about 21 Jump Street, the movie yes. and 22 mm -hmm. Jump Street. Um, so it depends upon how you do it. 
Okay. Do you take a serious show and turn it into a comedy, which I don't necessarily agree with, or do you take a comedy and turn it into a serious show, like what they're doing with uh, with the uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air? That's what my wife just said. And actually, I don't know if you guys have checked that out. I was very, I was huge into Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I didn't really want to watch the reboot version of it, but one night I came home from work, I threw it on, and honestly, I watched the whole first season. I couldn't get enough of it. I loved how Carlton was a drug addict, a secret closet drug addict. Um, Hillary was the one who cooked and, you know, it just the way they changed the characters, Jerome, I thought, I love how yeah. they do the little references no, in there, I, like the fight on the basketball court and everything. Like, no, I understand that. But my point, my point is, is how do you do it? Or do you do like what Full House did with, it's a continuation. Fuller House. I was actually going to bring yeah. that up. I was like, they could have totally done more of a darker spinoff if they and I was a, actually tried. And, and I was a huge fan of Full House. Like I said, I've been going back and rewatching all that. I love Full House growing up. Um, I loved uh, Danny Tanner. He was my favorite character. I know everybody right. was all about Uncle Jesse, but I love Danny. Um, right. And I know when they did the Fuller House, uh, I was kind of concerned. I didn't quite know what they were going to do. But when they did the pilot episode and it was kind of like, well, Danny's, hey, I'm going to give DJ the house, you know, for her kids and, you know, Jackson and them. And, oh, my God. And, like, what was her, uh, Jerome, what was um, DJ's youngest son's name? Max? I don't know. I was never a Full House fan. Max was Oh, okay. See, man, Max, her little smart mouth you know, youngest kid, he was so damn smart and he just, you know, always correcting people. Yeah, but there were no yeah. Wilson twins. But it was still, no, it no. was still like the, the Fuller, it was like Full House, but made into Fuller House. It was like so homey, so nice, but it was a borderline overly cheesy. Yeah. 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 And look at, look at, look, look what they did with the Connors. The Connors. Yeah, yeah man. Ruin yeah, like, Roseanne, in my right, opinion. Right, right. But, but the point I'm getting at, though, is it, the Connors was popular. As much as we yeah. don't like, may not like it, it the rate it was a ratings hit. Yeah. Okay. See, and I just can't get behind it, man. I don't know what the I hell they're doing with Becky. Like, yeah. But I'm the not, point I'm though is, is that I met your mother, so, Stan, so and their yeah. recent on that one is just bad. So, so do you do you take the show and you start over like Fresh Prince? Okay. Do you do a continuation like the Connors and Fuller House? Well, it depends on who your audience is, right? Exactly. If, you're, if exactly. you're gonna if you're gonna aim it for me, you have to continue it in some capacity. If you're gonna try and aim it to a new audience, then you have to fresh prints it and and change it up. So it really just depends on who your audience is. Like, right? You, you talked about uh, uh, Miami Vice and Twenty One Jump Street. Miami Vice is actually a pretty good movie. Yeah. There's some great interviews with Jamie Foxx about how he fucked that whole thing up. Uh, and he he basically takes the blame for why there's not a sequel and so on. Go go look it up. There's some really great stuff from Jamie Foxx. But it's a good movie. Um, 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street are also amazingly good movies. Like, this is funny shit, man. Mm -hmm. um, Jonah Hill and, and Channing Tatum are unbelievable. So great I think, together. Yeah, I think you can really do it either way as long as you are all in on whatever it is you're doing. Yeah, but like, you that. can't. You can't do the Connors because the Connors, what, when Roseanne came back, it was working, right? It's like, okay, yeah. it's Roseanne, it's back. We understand what's happening. When you kill her, spoiler alert, and it's just the family, there's no edge anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. just sort of Roseanne families the edge to the show, I doing agree. family things. And it's not necessarily bad, but it's not necessarily like must see TV either. But you, it, don't, want to, you don't want to do comedies like what they did with Starsky and Hutch. Which was they took yes, all the iconic the, imagery yeah. and just put it together and say, right. yeah, everybody same thing with, watch it. Same thing with Baywatch. They yeah, tried, I was just they tried Baywatch. to take Baywatch yeah. and, and sort cast. of 21 Jump Street. Baywatch was a great show, too. I love Baywatch. You know, I thought you know, I thought it was a good show for many different reasons. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I agree. When, you know, when they did you know the movie, who was the biggest fan of flopped. Baywatch? You know who the biggest fans of Baywatch was? Well, men. men? <laughs> now, the plastic surgery industry. Yeah. Mm. Lots of implants were done because of that that show. See, I I still think the Baywatch movie they they could have gone straight up done like an action drama movie, and I, I think, think they could have gone worked, drama. It, they could have would have worked better. Sure. Well, and that's the comedy. problem. If you watch the, the original movie, series, was more drama than what the what the film was. Yeah. yeah. But if you watch the movie, it starts as a comedy, and right. then about halfway through, it shifts into this sort of detective cop yeah. show they, they and it even, doesn't know what it wants to be or how to really you know exploit either side so it becomes this weird you know two-face movie that that you don't know what you're getting at any given scene hey at least they didn't do baywatch nights okay they oh, did i would have preferred oh, baywatch yeah. nights. <laughs> are you kidding 
Baywatch <laughs> Nights would have been amazing. And I will write that script for you right now, Hollywood. <laughs> they Baywatch did a great Nights. job with A Team. They did an A-team awesome job with A Team. And I disagree on that one, but then you know I'm an old school. I can't fan. complain about the the reboot or the the re the reemergence the of yeah. um Punky Brewster. Like I can't mm-hmm. hate it. Um, but but here's here's the caveat to that. I know the acting's not great, but the fact that the consistent character is still very similar to how she was when she was a kid. I kind of think that it's totally marketed to us because we just want our kids to love what we love. Look, and I get it, I get it, but I didn't hate it. But that's just what like, that's what Tom is talking about. He wants con- uh, consistency just, when they bring back. Just like I didn't hate, I didn't hate the Babysitters Club either. Like so I read every question. single book and watched every single you know thing that was on it when I was a kid. I didn't hate it as an adult watching the Netflix. Series. How, how would you guys bring back Silver Spoons? Why would you? Well, you just well, you know, Aaron I mean, Gray, uh, literally, why would you? For Aaron Gray, things, you know? just, just because it existed previously but doesn't mean that it should ever exist again. <laughs> and there are right. many examples of this. Oh, I can go even further back if you really want to. Okay. Well, iconic, oh. but iconic things. How are you going to change stuff? Like, I don't think some things I don't think should be changed. Listen, like Saved by the Bell. Why you could do you could do Silver Spoons as Steve Jobs finds his kid in like in real life, you know. <laughs> You know, that's true. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. They, they've done a remake uh, or uh, kind of like a resurgent of uh, Saved by the Bell already. They, they've done, yeah, the, and they've done the new class. They've done I hate it. The, him, they them did, going to college. They did the college years. I know. And then I hate the new one. I don't like the new one either. Like, I didn't mind why? the college years too bad. Yeah, I like the college years. They were kind of fun. They were dumb, but they were kind of yeah. fun. It was dumb. I didn't like it. I thought it was stupid. And I was in college when I was watching it. So it's like, this is stupid. <laughs> but the new one, it's like, my, my issue is visibility is important, but then you make everything visibility and you put them in there for the sake of being in there. It's like, I mean, if, the if they were going to bring, really being if told. they could, if, if you want to see them bring back Saved by the Bell, then do it, uh, do it more of a, a teen drama. Saved by the Bell, the well, next and then, generation. And then where it's they're just all, Beverly Hills 90210, which they yeah. rebooted yeah. three, four, five times. As well. yeah. Some of these things yeah. literally are moments in time, right? Yeah. They just grab you at a moment in time, let them exist and float there forever. We and don't need to. We, we and, and I know, again, we're in that nostalgia world, right? Where wait it's wait like, wait hey, wait. remember what happened to these characters? Like, yeah, but just let them. How, how many remakes of Charlie's Angels do we really need? <laughs> at least one more <laughs> no no the last one the last one i'm like going what i just saw that you know i saw the ad for that last one and i went yeah i don't think i think i'm gonna pass and i'm a charlie's angels fan so th- let me ask this to, to both tom and leonard since you guys are writers uh what is today's like general audience what what is today's general audience looking for and say a tv show or a movie Oh, I wouldn't have a clue about TV because I do not watch TV. Uh, like, it, I mean, I watch it like if it's a Netflix show or whatever, that, that's fine. But as far as like this is on whatever channel, like I have no idea what, what TV is even is anymore. Um, so for me, I, I as a writer, here's the, here's the reality. As a writer, I don't care what the audience is looking for. I write the things that I want to write that I think I can then promote to an audience to, to whatever audience it happens to be, whether it's horror or superheroes or Westerns or whatever. And that's why I write so many different things. Um, for me, it's not about, Hey, there's an audience for basket weaving contests. And I'm going to write us something about that. Like I don't give a damn about it. So I'm not going to write about it. That's a challenge right there. <laughs> well, somebody else can have it. You're welcome to it. You know, no. um, you know, I, I feel like we're too stuck in, in reality nowadays, like real life things. Yeah. Um, I love to write and exist in fantasy worlds that, that don't have to follow specific rules of any kind. Um, so I, I don't know what is being looked for because I'm not of the age that looks for things. I, I just, I see something, it sells itself or it doesn't. Uh, and, and that's kind of where it is for me. <clears throat> I feel like there's an audience for everything. You just have to market to it. 
and each audience but and each audience sort of is is segmented and and this this has a small audience this has a large audience you know that kind of thing so um you know it's it's very different when you're like creating something out of zero and whether you're taking like 21 jump street and saying okay how do we make 21 jump street a relevant thing you know 30 years after this tv show and and there are different determinations for starting at zero and you know, taking something that exists and is known uh, and turning it into something. Leonard, do you want to add to that? Well, Hollywood is really big on recycling. It's like they don't really want to mess <laughs> with originality anymore. Like they're really cool with just going back and rebooting stuff and, you know, remaking things. And it just, I don't know if that's just a, an issue where it's like they want to reach out to new people, but they want to tap into like an old fan base, kind of like we were saying with the 21 Jump Street stuff. And I did think it was cool in those movies that they did have some of the original actors pop mm -hmm. up, you know. Yeah. Like, if you look at, you know, like cult followings and things like that. Uh, I mean, how would you think people would react if like they're like, OK, so they did a uh, 21 Jump Street. Let's do a Booker movie. Oh God, no! Been off with uh, Richard Grieco, you know. Yeah, so, I know. I mean, <laughs> it's like how God, far no. do you go? You know. I mean, Brian, Brian if you don't know, mind, I actually have a like, question for uh, Tom and, and uh, Lenny. Uh, guys, this kind of—I mean, it goes out to the whole panel. But my wife uh, came up with an idea here, uh, maybe a month or two back. Um, the movie Thirteen Ghosts. We're waiting for Netflix or Hulu maybe to pick up a series. Each episode, 13 episodes, explains each ghost. How would you guys write that, man? Oh, that would be awesome. I hate explanations. <laughs> I hate <laughs> explanations. I, 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 I hate would it. never like, sing the movie you, again because it scared the hell out of me. You, you 13 leave. is awesome. Sometimes, Sometimes you got to have amazing actors. Sometimes you got to have ambiguity uh, and, and, and don't worry about all that. And that's one of the things that Hollywood does. They're so overly... Uh, uh, ready to explain everything because every time somebody walks out of a theater and doesn't understand something, it's immediately in the review giant plot hole because I didn't understand something. And you know, at least 50% of the time, you can be like, dude, you didn't watch the movie, you were on your phone because yeah. here's the answer exactly. to your, your, your problem. Um, but some things you just leave ambiguous, just let them be what they are, let it be whatever the, the audience wants it to be. Um, and oftentimes that's a better explanation than than your actual explanation. Uh, 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 what's his name? Cameron, right? With Avatar. People were coming out of Avatar being like, well, this is just this and this is this and this is this and this is this. And he would be asked, so what? what is Avatar? What is it really about? What does it really mean? And he Avatar would, to me he was would just basically his, with wolves. His response, well, it, this is the point. Other people were saying it's Pocahontas. Other people were saying it's this, it's this, it's this. His response was, what do you think it was? And they would say they, something, and he would be like, "Well, then that's what it was." But and that's, that's good writing, though. Yeah, but well, it, 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 I mean, it, it is and it isn't. But ultimately, it's letting the audience decide for themselves, which is what you have to do with mm -hmm. any product, whether it's a book, a comic, a movie, a TV. You have to let the audience decide for themselves sometimes. Um, and and you know, open-ended facts <laughs> or story points are not holes. They're just we haven't gotten to it yet. You know, um, but and, sometimes and based, you don't need it to be explained. You just it. People sometimes look too closely. Well, based on based on that thing, two thousand and one could never happen today because of people would just lose their minds trying to figure that one out. Yeah, because no one knows what the hell's going on. It's yeah, yes. exactly. And that's that's and and here you have one of the greatest films of all time that nobody knows what or, or even understands the ending. Right. You know? True. And and you know that Curious. that could never happen yeah, today. Too. The film, like the, like like Nicole said, the, the film was terrifying. I mean, it was very well put together. It was very well done. Like Tom said, there's really no backstory really to any of the 13 ghosts, I guess. Which, well, the 12, which version? You know? But it just gets to a point, I think, with like when – I don't think they could have cast a better actor than Matthew Lillard. Uh, my wife and I are a huge Matthew Lillard fan. I loved him in SLC Punk. To me, that is his greatest film that he'll ever do. Um, I hated the fucking ending of SLC Punk. Um, you know, not because of what it was, but, you know, it was just to me being a former punk rocker, being in a former band and, you know, doing the punk rock stuff back in the day, like no. to me, the film was just more of like, Hey, do what you got to do. But Hey, at the end, you're going to, you're going to buy into the system. And, you know? Yeah. You're, yeah. You're just going to sell listen, out. Listen, his greatest that. role 
was Shaggy. Thank you. Oh, Shaggy. Oh, my God. He was so good. Exactly. Nobody parents. plays Shaggy better than him, with the exception maybe of, you know, of... Um, if there was a live-action role, Jerome, Casey of Shaggy, it couldn't have been played better, I agree, 100%, than Matthew Lillard. There he was go. that typical... Stoner boy character, yeah. man. I mean, he was like he had the he had the look, he had the build, he had that awkwardness. He had the moves. He, like, I mean, you watch him. Yeah, move. He just the way moved. he posed, the way he yeah, the way he walked. I mean, he really studied that character. But then again, I think you know all of us grew up watching the original Scooby Doo, as did Matthew Lillard, I'm sure. So and then he went on. Then he went on to do all of the films. He was Shaggy throughout all the voiceover work on the films later on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. The, um, what yeah, I just think Matthew Lillard is just one of the. I, I think he's a forgotten art um, when it comes to actors. Um, I yeah, think he's uh, underrated. He's a underrated. lot of people talk. A lot, a lot of shed light on lately. A lot yeah. of people talk about you know Tom Cruise or Tom Hanks or whatever, but you got to kind of throw Matthew Lillard in there too, though, man, because he can play any character. I mean, when he played Stu and Scream, uh, killed that role in my opinion. Um, he did gotcha. did did great in that film. Uh, mm -hmm. He was my personal favorite character in, in the whole uh, in the original Scream. Um, yeah. I was hoping when we saw the new Scream, I was hoping, you know, maybe because we didn't technically see if Stu died or not. Technically, you know, his mom and dad was going to be really pissed at him, but we never <laughs> saw, you know, if he was going to come back or not. And I really hope that he was going to come back. You know, we don't know how deep he got stabbed at the end, but. His mom and dad were going to be really upset with him, but I was hoping that, you know, yeah, we were going to get a Matthew Lillard uh, cameo possibly, um, but unfortunately it didn't happen. But yeah, Matthew Lillard, man, I would put him in my top 10 uh, favorite actors of all time. Everything that dude has done has been awesome to me. Shit, for my money's worth, like Matthew Lillard, I liked him as serial killer in the Hackers movie. And oh, honestly... Yes. I would mm -hmm. say Lillard has the chops. He'd make a great fucking Joker if they wanted to. Yes, oh, God, yes. He would would I didn't he not? Think about that. Yeah. yeah like, the thing about God, no more Jokers. Too, you gotta have no that. No more Jokers. Down. Stop with the Jokers, please. <laughs> Good Lord, with the Jokers. No more Thank Jokers. You. Joker for Thank the, you for the Batman. Because I just seen tell other stories. Scene. There's lots of other stories. Let's go tell other stories. Yeah. Thank God, no, no more Jokers. <laughs> All right, so in Gotham, Jerome, though, like mm -hmm. I feel like he would have been a good new Joker. Since Jerome in Gotham older, was the, was awesome. The actor yeah. is older now. Like I feel like he would have made like a, actually a pretty good like Joker. I love the staple face. I thought that was great. Like, I'm so I over Joker. And, and it was weird. Like Jerome, I can't remember the actor's name off the top of my head. Guys, help me out. But he came from Shameless, you know, coming over to do Gotham to play the Joker, which what set up the Joker with the twin brother who became the Joker in Gotham, but, oh, I thought, I, me personally, uh, with Gotham, I love the series, but I think Jerome should have been the Joker when he did the stapled face and all that. I think that was awesome. Um, I don't think his twin brother should have been I never what became the Joker. the Joker personally. Listen, I don't think I could pull off the Joker. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Cameron Monaghan is his name. Yeah. I um, must have missed something during my watch of uh, of Gotham because I I had to stop watching it after a while because it just it, they were throwing way too much it, it, too many characters all at Gotham once. Gotham was a great and cast, but the show cast. wasn't all that. Great. Yeah, each episode seemed to throw like eight characters. Willow, I will agree with you on that. You're 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 trying to follow they like I, I'm what, of, uh, focus on maybe one to two characters an episode. To give you know their story or their moment or whatever, but when you're throwing eight characters at once, I will agree with that. That was one thing that Gotham did that I couldn't get behind because you had, you know, eight to ten characters in in a you know hour episode. You oh, know, they were and throwing the entire canon at everything. You know? I I was uh, I I loved how it started and I I wanted to see how the character of the Riddler was going to evolve and love the that. Riddler. That was one of my I, favorites. If they would have focused on that first and then went into like bringing in other characters later on, then fine. But they just I I you know I watched like the first half of the first season and I kind of went yeah I'm done thanks folks have a nice day yeah you know like giving the Batman Carico was great in it I wish Carico could have got a more of a cameo appearance but what was that Lynn I was saying like giving the Batman franchise the Smallville treatment just didn't work I mean it's like. It's not the same. It's like Batman minus Batman. That's basically yeah. what that show was. And I, just, I couldn't get into it. I hated it almost as much as I hate Big Bang Theory, which is 
say really saying something because I thought that shit was blackface for nerds, man. <laughs> See, I love Big Bang Theory, man. We're actually going back and rewatching it for like the sixth time. I love Big Bang. I love I love Big Bang Theory is is interesting because Leonard's not wrong, and the people that like it aren't wrong. But the Big Bang Theory for the first two seasons. Is kind of rough. It's kind of oh, like yeah. what Leonard's talking about. It's it's sort of like jokes about nerds at the, mm -hmm. you know, at, at about the nerds. But once you get to season three, things start to change a little bit. It's still obviously pop culture nerd jokes, but yeah, it does definitely have a different shift, and it mm -hmm. kind of goes into a different direction, a different tone. Um, but the first two seasons are very much. Oh but yeah, with season think, sure. three though, they, it wasn't quintessential nerddom. They were they were outside of that, like they were involved with people and they right. were you know they weren't just the nerds that were yeah but by the time you got the third season um nerd culture had really taken off okay yeah. and become mainstream true and so mm -hmm. that's the difference between when they started big bang when you i mean i don't know if you've ever seen the the unaired pilot um which is an interesting watch in and of itself um nerd culture hadn't started yet hadn't really taken off and and that's the, that's where where we're seeing with uh, with Big Bang was now nerd culture. I mean, I ran into one of the bullies of my high school years, which makes that forty years. Um, and he thinks he's some you know nerd genius because he watched you know the MCU or whatever. Jerome, and I was just gonna say, are you sure there's not another zero after that? Don't you even go there. <laughs> Wow. I will come down there and kill you. <laughs> and at but, this point, I'm going to let you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but my point is, is that, you know, here we have a bunch of culture now where a lot of people that I grew up with would beat me up for watching, you know, Star Trek or Star Wars. Or any, or, you know, yeah. Right. And now these guys are wearing the shirts. They think they're, you know, they got the bumper yeah. stickers. They think they know everything about it. And you're kind of going, yeah, don't even start with me, pal. You don't know this from this. <laughs> okay. And, and that's where we are right now. We're in the middle that nerd culture won. My you know? favorite moment from the Big Bang Theory, like my all-time favorite moment, because, again, I'm a huge Sheldon fan. Uh, what I loved most was the grand finale episode. Um, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> when, oh, okay. I well, know what happens. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay, right on. I, I don't want to spoil anything because you want to. <laughs> no, no, you're doing that much spoiler. I already know what happens. No, I, I love that Sheldon got up there to accept the Nobel Prize, and I love that he honored his friends <laughs> who stood beside him because Sheldon was a very hard person to understand uh, as a character, and the fact that he gave honor to his friends at his Nobel um, winning. Um, I love the fact that he, you know, like like he says at the beginning of his speech, hey, I wrote this speech. It's all about me, but it's not all about me. It's about the people who stood beside me and the people who made me who I am. And um, I, love it, I thought that episode was great. Um, I love how they ended it. I love how Sheldon gave them, gave everyone their due and how he introduced them, you know, whether it was an astronaut or a physicist or whatever. I love the fact that Sheldon just was like, you know, Forget the speech. I'm going to do this from the heart. And I thought if that was the last episode, to me personally, they couldn't end it, end it that any better. Like Sheldon, being Sheldon, and then we all obviously seen the show, uh, Sheldon was a very uh, narcissist person. You know, um, he was smarter than everybody. He was better than everybody. Um, but at the end, it, it opened Sheldon up to, hey, without my friends, you know, I wouldn't be standing here today. So I, I thought that was really cool. It, it was a cool way to um, not only in the show, especially with the acoustic version of the intro song, um, them all sitting, you know, in the living room, um, eating takeout. But just the just Sheldon's speech was really cool. I, I just love that he honored the people who were his true friends. I thought that was really cool. I feel like in the end, like what we get out of our TV shows and whatever reimaginings or however something develops over the course of time, it directly relates to what we're experiencing in the real world. Cause you know, mm -hmm. a lot of times I think the art imitates the way we would like life to be. And so we would like to have everyone learn through the course of the seasons to not be such a narcissist or not, to cope with your neurotypical brain, like, you know, like to cope with those things. And I think that if he is well enough and able to cope enough to give due to his friends who he wouldn't have normally done, like we have hope for everybody. And I think that that's kind of like the, the theme there is that we have hope for everybody that everybody can change. 
you know, if we learned yeah. anything, it's like sometimes we can't go back 15 years and and say, you know, I blame you for all these things that happened 15 years ago. I'm like, if you came back at me, thank God I was didn't have social media because honestly, 15 years ago, what did I know 15 years ago? I didn't know shit 15 years ago. So, you know, I was 25. I didn't have a clue. Oh, you young like, whippersnappers. Now, what, you know, do you, do you think it would have been different had they actually acknowledged the fact that they they made Sheldon like someone who had autism or uh, Asperger's? Oh, yeah. They, that's intentionally what they did. Yeah. If you just look at those first few seasons, like Tom was saying. This guy's got some serious. Well, no, but but issues. she's but she's saying they didn't actually they didn't acknowledge say that, that he though. had. It. There was no there was no like they oh, never explained really it. like what yeah. It it's didn't just, it but it's that's socially point, though. it's like that's a socially the, awkward group of people is basically yes, what it was, yeah. you know and and that and was that's one of, the point though not everybody not everything needs to be labeled we oh, start no, no, labeling everything and we have them in a show just so that they can be visible it's like just have it it's like having. A character that's LGBTQ or someone who's trans. When or, I saw, when I like, saw, why do you need to do that? Like, oh, I didn't have to. I mean, I, okay? I, when I first saw the first couple of episodes, I immediately thought Sheldon was high, high functioning autism. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. Because if you and, know people with the, if you know someone with the disorder, you know exactly what to look for. Hey, listen. For a long time, uh, for I, I worked for a certain office automation company begins with an X, um, and I was down at MIT for years. Okay, it was Big Bang Theory in real life. Okay, and I can tell you stories, but um, you know, when I watch Big Bang Theory, I'm immediately going, "Yeah, it's MIT. I don't care if it says it's Caltech. It's MIT." <laughs> you know, um, but you know, yeah. I mean, I know a bunch of this. I watch some of that, and I'm going, "Okay, yeah, that's me and my guy friends there. Yeah, I did that one there. Uh, they got that wrong, but they're close. You know, you you would watch that." And after a while, you just gave up on that stuff, yeah. you know? And, like, I think for me, uh, and I can see for my wife and I, uh, I know with, like, Big Bang Theory, one of the one of the things that we loved the most was, like, all the friends got around the living room and just hung out and ate and talked and stuff like that. Uh, we've opened our house up to, you know, our friend group and stuff. And usually every weekend, you know, we're, we're doing pizza or we're doing – my wife's cooking food or something, you know. And, you know, it's just, like, when you watch like, – when I went back and watched it again in my older years um, from when it originally aired on TV uh, to see how uh, our friend group is in our living room, because that was like the main scene, you know, was them sitting in Leonard's living room, you know? And um, I just thought that was really cool. Like I can kind of relate to that. And I think that's why I got back into it because I I'd watched it all. Cause I, I love, comics and i love superheroes and i love horror and all that stuff you know and they brought a lot of that stuff not not so much horror but they brought a lot of the comics up and a lot of you know them hanging out in the comic shop and things like that but yeah going back to what i was saying was sitting in the living room and things like that with your friends and just you know discussing life and and things like that it was just really cool like for me and to go back and watch it in, in my older you, life now and it doesn't yep. matter who you are where you're at like anything about you it's just like it shows that like Friendships just happen with whatever. It doesn't matter if you've got any type of disorder of any kind. It's just like yeah. everybody just still loves you for the fact that you're just fun to be around. But in the end, I yeah. love show. Yeah. I thought Sheldon was I really and, did. I, you know, my, see, my, in, in our lives, like we don't label people in general. You're a weirdo. Um <laughs> Literally just labeled somebody. All right, he won't let me put him on camera, but he's seriously, he's a weirdo. Um, <laughs> oh my but God. listen, you know, like, my, 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 my Friday night D&D &D game that I did for like almost 20 years was... Um, you know, was that sort of thing. You know, we we play the game, but it was just nothing more than a mechanism for us to get together and hang out and yes. we talk about our days or, or what's the work we were doing. A friend of mine was going for his PhD and he talked to us about what, you know, the research he was doing while he was DMing the game, you know? So it yeah. was just, a, it was just a, um, a vehicle. That's all it was. You know? See, like for us, in our household, it's, it's professional wrestling. Like, professional <laughs> wrestling all the time. So fans. we just sit, man, and we watch hours and hours of professional wrestling. And we just, we talk, like like you said, Jerome, man, we just talk about life and our our careers and our jobs and where we're going in life. And 
and that's what I loved about the Big Bang Theory so much was it was just a group of people who shouldn't have been together, but they were together and they found each other and they found common interests and they were able to just talk if, about life. If it hadn't been for that D and D group, I never would have survived my divorce. Okay, they were there for me when when it happened, and you know they were very much the Big Bang Theory there. You know, I mean, yeah, I had you know everybody in there with the exception of me had a master's or above in my my D and D group. And, um, you know, when my divorce happened and my ex decided, you know, one night that, okay, I'm done. I'm out of here. Uh, yeah, I was a mess and they were there for me. And that's all I can say, you know, that's awesome though, that you had some group of friends to help you through that. Yeah. yeah, for yeah. Sure. I think so, the yeah. truth of the matter is we gravitate towards shows that make us either wish we'd had it or reminisce about something we did have. Like, so, like, our fandoms are what get us through a lot of the things that happen. So, like, if if I hadn't started watching Supernatural when I started watching Supernatural, I like, I understand it. that. 15 years. The, like, that's the whole thing. But, like, it was about family. It was about what you do for family. It was about holding things together. I understood Dean at a whole nother level that people didn't understand. So you understood him as a dog. He loved pie. <laughs> he loved pie. There you but, go. <laughs> but I understood him at a whole nother level like this. The, the you know, the older sibling that's trying yeah. to hold things together. The I'll do anything for my, my family kind of thing like that. Mm -hmm. I was very much that person. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a lot of, like, I always kind of felt like we were separated and segmented and I got it. Like, and then the people that were important to you were not necessarily the, they were the family you chose. And yes, the people yes. that you, that was what the entire thing was about because Castiel <laughs> and, and everybody after that, this whole like conglomerate of hunters was, was the family he chose, whether they segmented off, the people always came back. And so uh, it was like, it made us understand. Now I was never the person that freaked out about things. So like there was that whole thing at the end of the show about queer baiting and da, 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 da. And I was like, why can't we just... For what it is. Why can't we just enjoy something for the fact that it was that? Like, why can't somebody be important to somebody without us having to make a big deal about it? And then, it yeah, that, sort of, that sort of controversy fades after time. It wasn't you know? a commentary on anything. It was. Right. And, and, it didn't and need that, to be and, a commentary on social justice or whatever. It's but, just, and that, just and that will all eat. and that will all and that all fades over time. Okay, that's sort of has. that sort of it's just, it's well, and it's like to piggyback off a little bit what Nicole just said about you know finding something. Um, that's how I was with uh, The Walking Dead uh, with Rick Grimes. Um, I gravi just gravitated towards Rick Grimes. Um, I thought to myself, man, if we're in a zombie apocalypse, I would be Rick Grimes. Like <laughs> the guy did what he did for he his really family. Um, he lost his family, you know what I mean? But he created a new family, and those strangers that he met along the way. They had his back. And if you have me and if anybody knows me, if you've got my back, I got yours. And, you know, until the end, um, oh, when I'm, they, zombie, I'm zombie food. When they got happens. rid of Rick, <laughs> I, I honestly thought when they got rid of Rick that I wasn't going to be a fan of the show. Um, obviously the way that they wrote him off, you know, uh, I love Andrew Lincoln. Um, I thought you couldn't have picked a better live action Rick Grimes than Andrew Lincoln, in my opinion. Nobody else could have came in and done that role. I love Rick with the long stringy hair and the beard. Uh, I thought that was his best. I love the Rick Tatorship stuff. He wasn't doing it to be a dick. He was doing it to be like, listen to me and I will keep you alive. Like, do you want to go and do it without me? Then go do it without me. But have fun dying and getting bit by a walker. Like, yeah. I'm trying to keep this group together. And the thing that made Rick so special to me was the first time they walked into uh, Alexandria when he talked, uh, when he basically talked to the mayor of Alexandria. Um, you know, he let him know, man, when he was on camera, when she was filming him, she, you know, she asked him, you know, how is it out there? You know, like these people, you know, he's like, this is my family. He made that very clear that these strangers that he met along the road, that was his family. And he was willing to die for Abraham and Rosita and everybody else that came into his group. You know, they had a group of like 12, I think it was when they walked through the gates of Alexandria and Rick was just going to be that guy. That's like, I'm going to do what I got to do to keep my family and alive. What and he stepped up right after. And that. everybody always looked to Rick. And I just think being a leader in my own right, I think that, you know, I just look to Rick, man. Like I got a lot of my friends that look up to me and they're like, Hey, we listen to you. We trust you. And a trust, you know, trust is a big thing. 
And I think when you bring into, you know, even in the books, you know what I mean? Uh, Rick was a big part. Now, I think that maybe Daryl, um, I've been seeing some things, but I'm thinking maybe the way the show is going now, I don't know. Maybe Daryl might be the guy that takes Rick's uh, comic book death. I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But again, when it comes to TV shows, I love uh, grabbing a hold of a character that I can relate to. And Rick Grimes will always yeah. be that character of he's number one in any TV show that I've looked at myself at and said, that's the character that I would be in this TV show or this book or whatever. Like uh, much respect to Andrew Lincoln for playing the live action Rick Grimes. Uh, I know it's hard coming off a comic book page to play a, you know, a live action character. Um, I thought Andrew, uh, Andrew Lincoln did great. Um, I thought the guy did a great job uh, being the character of Rick Grimes. Uh, he looked out for people, and I thought that was really cool. And I love the way that they wrote him off, man. You know, they didn't kill him, you know. And, again, it just goes to show you, can Rick Grimes die? I mean, I know he dies in the books, but, I mean, can he die on the TV show? I don't know. I mean, look what the, you know, look what the guy's been through. He's still here, you know. Like, he's not on the show, but he's still there, you know, in the universe. And But, yeah, I just think, like, like Nicole said, you find a character, you find a show, and I think you can really – grip their reality and you can really put yourself in that mentality of like this is who i would be if i was on this show like i know a lot of people are all about daryl i love daryl but rick grimes man that's where i'm at rick fucking rick grimes i, I got a question for you tom since people are, are opening up about what they're drawn to for like tv shows and stuff like that do you have stories of people reaching out to you about your your books that you wrote that they they were like, thank you for writing this character. I mean, is there stories that you want to share? Um, I, I mean, that happens. I, I get I get people that, that send me emails and, and just, I mean, they all know I live on Facebook anyway, so they shoot me, uh, you know, direct messages on Facebook. Um, sometimes it's, it's down the road. Um, like, I've had people email me, like, years later, like, hey, you know, I want to tell you I like this book or this character, or, you know, whatever it is. Sometimes it's, like, immediately after something comes out, they were like, oh, my gosh, this is great. So it definitely happens, 100%. Um, and it's all over the place uh, because, like I said, I write a lot of different stuff. So some people really fall into, uh, you know, whatever world it is that they're falling into, and, and they just love what's happening. So um it definitely happens um it, it's it's sort of like that fan mail thing right you like you kind of think it's not really real like these guys are just probably just writing their own fan mail um but you know it it does happen um and and it's it's really an amazing feeling to just get like this completely unsolicited message like out of the blue like oh, who's this email i don't know who this is uh oh it's that person i don't know who that person is and then you read what they're talking about and it's like wow that's amazing so yeah it, it happens for sure it's is there one that jumps out to you that that will stick with you forever um well i mean i've gotten general messages of sort of support uh of of you know like i love what you do in general like it's not like this story this specific story blah 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 but um i've gotten long emails where they're like you know i i like what you do um i i love the characters i connect with this one i connect with that one um there have been a few where people have have messaged me like I've killed off a character and they get very concerned. Uh, oh, my God, she's not really dead, is she? And I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> uh, sorry. And But you can see the emotion in it. Right. And, and that happens even when I talk to people at, at the cons, um, they're 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 devastated by what happens to your characters, uh, whether it's a death or whether it's just, you know, general tragedy uh, around their lives. Um, so you can really see how people can get dug in to characters. Um, I never assumed that that would happen with my stuff. Like that's not my, my thought process is I'm entertaining you guys. Right. But, um, when, when bad things happen to these characters, the fans react and, and it's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing feeling. I, I don't mean to laugh at what you're saying, Tom, but it's I, suddenly with what you were saying about fan reaction, all of a sudden I, I visualize you stuck in the misery novel. <laughs> you know i'm like oh my god we're, tom's gonna disappear well, and we're gonna find I mean, him next summer we're not you know? too far away from that because i write so much stuff that you know we kind of cycle through different books and and there are definitely people that are like yo give me more of that other book man i need some more of that other book and i'm like we're, we're coming back to it we're, we're gonna get there so yeah, uh, that's not too far uh, away so if, if tom disappears everybody 
take a look for his, at his super fans. <laughs> I actually have a question for Tom uh, from my wife, Emmy. Uh, she wants to know um, what books you've wrote, Tom, and where can she read them? Because she's a huge, huge book nerd. She loves to just lay on the couch wrapped up in her uh, house robe and just read books. So uh, well, I, I don't do books. Well, that's not true. I did write a book. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. It's Ursa Minor. Um, it is a novelization of the comic book Ursa Minor, which is what I'm working on right now. It's actually the 10-year anniversary of Ursa Minor. Um, and we're going to be doing a, a series of comics all year long for it. Um, okay. But if you go to BigDogInc.com, all of my comics are there. We've been doing this for 12 years now. So okay. it's it's westerns, it's horror, it's fantasy, it's science fiction, right. it's, okay. it's everything. Well, all the everything. stuff that she's into. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so, like, well, yeah, she just wanted me to. The, so a lot, well, you know, they come out like the floppy issues like this, but a lot of, because it's 12 years old now, um, uh, the company is, uh, a lot of those single issues are, are long gone, very hard to find. But we do have trade paperbacks, like collected, you know, you get like six issues in a book. So it's like binging a season on Netflix. So. All of our titles that have, um, um, you know, multiple issues, we have those those big books that you can get and and dive into the, the trade paperbacks and um, get a lot of content at once. But if you do want the book, I did adapt the Ursa Minor story into an actual legitimate novel that you can get on Amazon. You can buy one as a physical book. Or you can put it on your Kindle uh, and do it that way too. So, okay. my wife's actually writing all this down, Tom, because like, <laughs> she's super excited because she loves her books, man. So this, she this, really this is the key right here. It's Big Dog Inc., right? And if you guys want to just shoot me a message afterwards, um, if you have any questions, you know, just shoot me a message. It's fine. I can, right I can help. I can help direct you to wherever. Uh, well, wherever. See, he's doing that right now. <laughs> he's like, <"I'm> out, <laughs> gone. <laughs> 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 Next thing you hear. No. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that was fast, man. That was fast. Uh, yeah, I actually had just had a guy review some stuff. He, he got a couple of books at uh, uh, a little mini con that I was at, and then he posted online. That's the crazy part, right? It's like when people want to take the time to actually review your stuff and, and like put it on their social media. Like that's wild to me. Like they like it so much. Well, hopefully they like it so much, I'm not, you know, turn it down. But generally speaking, they like it so much that they like want to tell all the people that, that are following them. Like, Oh, Tom does this thing and it's Oz and it's, it's goth day. And it's, it's this, and it's so cool how we, it's like, wow, that's really, really amazing that, that people want to, you know, take their time to, to talk about the stuff that I do that just it blows my mind. I mean, obviously some people do it sort of like for, for a living or whatever, like they do reviews and, and that kind of thing, but um, just sort of the general, you know, buyer audience, like, Hey, I bought this book and it's really cool. And then they tag me in it. Um, and I'm like, wow, that's, that, that's mind blowing to me. So yeah, it's fun. Well, there you go, Shane. Right on, man. I appreciate it, Tom. Thank you. Of course. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm listening I was, as we we're having this discussion about shows and stuff. I'm noticing that we're staying, it's like 90s and afterwards, you know, you know, 90s, early aughts, and so on. Did none of you guys ever watch anything from the 80s or before? Oh, I actually, love the 80s. I did, actually, but what? I don't I don't go back to much of it anymore. Um, um there was a series I enjoyed, and I think it came out late 80s and went into the early 90s. It was Canadian production called My Secret Identity. Yes. And Jerry O'Connell, he was like this teenager and he got his next door neighbor was like a mad scientist, basically. And the guy was shot show, show, an ion beam through the room and he had to walk in the pathway and gets powers. And I thought it was a great series. It came and went. And it's one of those type of shows. It would be really cool if they had done a movie or to reinvent it or, you know, revisit those characters. Um, I do know, you know, like every now and again, you ever seen where like they used to do, they don't, they used to do like TV movies. Oh yeah, they, believe me, I know about TV and movies. Yeah, you know, so it's like um, one of the God, biggest TV movies of, of all time was Cold Shack the Night Soccer. Yeah, it um, wasn't Bubble Boy. No, no, <laughs> Travolta. Don't get me started. I actually watched Willow. I actually watched it when it aired. So don't start with me. Hey, look, Willow, oh. you scared Shane away. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the big TV movie events was V. You guys remember when V came? Oh out? yes, mm -hmm. yes. The discussion I had at college when that was, that was there. You that know? Shit was a trip. That was great. I got. That I was, was fortunate. Stuff. I got to meet Mr. Willie there. Later known as Freddy Krueger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. 
Yeah, this was before his Freddy Krueger days. Yeah. Sorry, guys. The storm just keeps knocking me out, apparently. So. No worries. Did somebody say Bubble Boy right before I, I lost yeah, it? Yeah, that was Willow. That was Willow. Okay. Okay. They mentioned uh, TV movies. Yeah. I like thought I heard 80s. Bubble Boy, and I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. There was a... Yeah. Or could there you was, imagine with the, with the technology they have now, um, if they if they redid Small Wonder, you remember the little Android? Oh my god! Because yeah. <laughs> those Wonder, special oh effects were so god awful back then. Do you remember was, she I, would lift the couch up to vacuum? Yeah, <laughs> Just one hand lift. And I'd forgotten about stretch. Small Wonder to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a show 80s, in the 80s. We can do this, bro. Uh, that I think they should go back to you uh, and they can make it more serious. It was called out of this world. Um, yeah. It was like an alien girl, right? Yeah. She, yeah. Well, no, she was human. Well, part alien, I guess. Yeah. And she could go like this and freeze time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember but, that. Uh, the, I think it was her uncle or neighbor, uh, Doug McClear, who was Jerome. You should be familiar with him. He acted in a lot of stuff in like the seventies yeah. and sixties. Yeah. I know I Doug, Doug McClure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're old, Leonard. You should remember all this stuff. You're they, old. They, 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 they made a um a character uh, out of him on The Simpsons. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah. Oh, incidentally, uh, did anyone catch the the new Simpsons prediction, the the Ukraine war that they predicted in 2022? No, no it, did they now? Someone just posted it the other day. Homer's running around with a Ukrainian flag. The Russians are there, Putin, and then it says at the bottom, 2022. Like, holy shit, man! man. Dude, I swear, somebody who works on the Simpsons production company is a time traveler. Yes, it's, absolutely. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, I, I know. Like, I, I know the uh, one of the guys that works on there. He uh, he's from this area. He was in uh, my Boy Scout troop. Um, what a jerk he was as a kid. I am surprised <laughs> at where he went. Okay, <laughs> I thought I thought for sure as a kid he was going to be a serial killer. Okay, <laughs> and then he goes on and he becomes this the background artist and editor for the show. Uh, wow. You know, maybe yeah. he is a serial killer because of what he does on the show. I don't know. <laughs> 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 so everyone was talking about being connected to uh, a character uh tom do you remember a character uh that you got connected to either in film probably godzilla i would uh, assume you were connected to him because you fell in love i definitely to relate to wanting to push things over definitely <laughs> <laughs> so that explains the cat ears <laughs> <laughs> but do, do you remember something that that you connected to uh, that still sticks with you? Like, is there a character out there? Um, not really. I, I know that's weird, right? I, I even like I, I remember I was a huge Star Wars kid. I mean, I was like six when Star Wars came out, so Star Wars was like a big deal. Um, Han Solo was cool, and you know all that kind of stuff. But I was actually even more. I liked I liked Han, but I liked Chewie even better even though Chewie didn't really do anything, but just kind of run around and roar. Um, again, back to Godzilla, so you, you running around and roaring. So yeah, you, maybe. Didn't wanna, you didn't want to shave either. <laughs> no, no. Plus, Chewie had a sweet no, no. Uh, shoulder shoulder belt strap, too. So Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, 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 felt, I think I fell more for, like, um, the world building of things. Like, I liked, uh, you know, the, the environments of everything. Like, I, I never liked Luke Skywalker. Like, screw that guy. I don't like this guy. But, you know, the world that he existed in was fantastic. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. So I'm always looking for that creative push of, of you know, the world beyond just. And that's why I'm so tired of, like, superheroes, like, constantly being put into this realism box. Like, what, what if superheroes were real? Who fucking cares? I don't care if they're real. I want to see them doing crazy shit because that's what superheroes do. That's their purpose. And then through all of the crazy crap, you can tell me messages of, of, of you know, real world events and, and so on because that's what they've done throughout their, their history and their existence. Um, but, you know, stop trying to just make everything real. Like, I don't care if they wear armor or spandex. Just tell me a cool story with a cool visual. So um, I so I bounced around my whole life. You know, I used to watch the old Batman and uh, not animated series, the uh, Adam, West, Adam, West, Adam West series. Yeah, the yeah. Adam West series where he's just wearing gray. He was wearing a gray shirt and, and you know, punching people out. Great, gray, gray spandex. 
Yeah. Batgirl, Tom. Batgirl. Yeah, of course, Batgirl. Of course, <laughs> Batgirl. <laughs> Batgirl <laughs> listen, for all Adam that series, the I will say, that, Batgirl was awesome. Every time you watch the credits of Batman, you're waiting for that last two seconds where she goes roaring across. Yep. Yes, it's a Batgirl episode. Yeah. You know. Yvonne Craig, man. That <laughs> you gotta love the boom, the pow, the bang, the, you know, I yeah. love that as a kid, man, watching yeah, that. Super fun. Brother. Super fun. So the weird bathing suit she wore in the episode where Joker's <laughs> anyway, that's yeah. another subject. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, I mean, obviously all, the characters... I'll, I'll raise you a, a Batgirl with a Catwoman. Julie Newmar. That's all I have to say to you. Yeah, Julie Newmar. Of course. Julie Newmar. You know? Julie Newmar. But yeah, I mean, obviously everything needs characters, right? Everything needs relatable characters. But um, there, there's not something that, that I can be like, oh yeah, I relate to that guy or that girl or that that whatever. I just, I, I try and get myself to a point where I can just sort of immerse myself in whatever the world is. Um, at least as far as it, obviously if it's a Godzilla movie, I, there's no relation here. You're just watching stuff blow up and tip over and, and monsters roar. But when you're talking about like dramatic things or comedy things, family things, you just kind of hope that, that the situation, uh, is, is relatable enough. Um, so yeah, like Tom, parenthood Tom. way back in the day, right? Steve Martin and parenthood. You guys remember yeah. that? way that's like keanu reeves like super early keanu reeves movie. yeah so um, tom tom i want you to find an artist by the name of bob eggleton yeah i know bob eggleton sure ba bob's a good friend of mine yeah he's, and, he's and done on, godzilla stuff forever well that's currently what is sitting on my wall is a uh, a piece of that bob did from destroy all monsters mm -hmm. of uh i've got godzilla and rodan in the bubble Mm -hmm. you know being picked up mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah i just saw yep. bob uh just hung out with bob two yeah he ago. did he did stuff for book covers and oh yeah and stuff still does. g fan and yeah he's great okay he's great what about you leonard uh is there a, a character that that you connected with um when you were younger there were a couple uh one of which i'd say um i don't know if any how many of you remember this or not but the bionic six cartoon Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I had the toys <laughs> for the longest time. I didn't know anybody who had seen the show other than me, and I, and I thought, man, it's not a Mandela effect. I know this shit existed. You know, <laughs> it did, it did, it did. But it, it kind of felt like that because it was really hard to find. And one day, it's like you know, I'm YouTube, and I kind of went down a rabbit hole. But I used to really dig the character of IQ on that show. You know, he was like, you know, he was he was black kid, and he was smart, and he wore glasses, and he had his bionics too. And I just thought, man, I totally could kind of relate to that, you know, because here I was, I was like, you know, a little nerdy kid. And I, uh, here I was seeing somebody look like me doing superhero shit. And it wasn't like, uh, like he was an original character. He wasn't somebody like, oh, let's, uh, let's have a black Captain America. Let's have a, you know, like a black Superman or whatever. It's like, he was kind of unto his own thing. He was part of that team, you know? And I feel like that right now there's a lot of tethering. Like, I think they have a, like right now, um, DC, or when they were doing their future state, there was a flash. I think it was supposed to be like, I think non binary or something. Um, nothing against doing uh, interesting takes on characters or variations in, in ethnicity or uh, orientation, but you know, you can make a unique character and not have them necessarily be a spin off of somebody, you know? Because um, if, if you write them well enough, they'll get popular on their own. You know, I mean, um, and I always felt that's kind of what they that's what they do a lot more now than back in the day. Um, another character I kind of related to, and uh, it was the thing from the Fantastic Four, because okay. here yeah. I was, I always thought of like being a, a larger person that that was like my arm, my natural armor. You know what I mean? <laughs> I very much kind of got into the whole idea of the Ben Grimm character. That was a great character. And, you know, despite all the cool shit, Mr. Fantastic did, he just couldn't figure out the right way to cure good old Ben. And I was just like, <laughs> man, it was, it was kind of sad. You know what I mean? Like he's like, Oh, I can get this dimension back in alignment and save this entire galaxy, but I can't cure my friend of his condition. It's like, I think Reed, I think there's a whole conspiracy that needs to be unraveled there. But I, I feel like Reed kind of kept everybody around. He's like, Hey, we can do good. Right. Yeah. They weren't Reed, Reed knew the team needed good. some muscle. I mean, it was like, oh, yeah. Ben, I haven't quite got it figured out yet. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go punch that guy. Friend. <laughs> <laughs> go, go try to beat up the Hulk, will you? Yeah, there you go. You can get what about you, uh, Jerome? Well, I go way back. Okay, so this I is I know where, you go way back. Yeah. Um, 
there, 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 there are two people that I, it was to me it wasn't related. It was aspirational who I wanted to be as I grew up. Um, so I grew up in the U.S. military. My dad was uh, 20 years Air Force. And I, I was born on a military base and I, I went all the way through ninth grade on, on military bases. And for me, it was Captain Kirk. I wanted to be as I grew up. My dad introduced me to uh, Star Trek. I became a huge Trekkie. Right before he died, my dad was complaining about, I should never have shown you Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and the other one was, and it's pure 70s, was the $6 million man, was the Steve Austin character. And, and that whole <clears throat> genre of, of, of the six million dollar man, forget the bionic woman for a bit. That's its own disaster and other things going on. With Don't it. forget the bionic woman. Yeah. Don't no, no. Trust woman. me. There are certain aspects I wish I could. <laughs> um, the remake, I definitely want to forget. Well, um, yeah. Okay. But, but the six million dollar man is, if you watch that for, and I think it ran for like six or seven seasons, you could definitely see the seventies through that entire series. Okay. Because it went from, from you know, kind of serious, kind of you know, realism. To then we had aliens and psychic powers, which all reflected the society at the time, and and it was just such a um, such a, a mirror to the society that we were going through at the time in the seventies. But I wanted to be Steve Austin. I didn't want to lose my limbs, but you know, I wanted to be you know that super agent that I you know that you get to see on TV every day. You know, here he is. He's he's he's, he's with the hot chick of the nineteen seventies at the time. You know. Um, and, and I wanted to be him. And, and those two were the ones that I wanted to be with, you know, as I was growing up, you know, and that they wanted really packed. Do yourself a favor, everybody go on YouTube and type in, how do you find this? Just type in, uh, uh, Steve Austin, bionic woman. Okay. There will be a video there somewhere of, of, uh, what's the dude's name? Not Steve Austin. What's the actual dude's name? Um, Ooh, Lee Majors, Lee Majors, yeah. Lee Majors singing a song about Jamie Summers from uh, the Bion it's uh, it's unbelievably cringeworthy and worth your time. <laughs> oh, there was it's, lots of cringeworthy stuff. Come fantastic. on. I mean, you know, when when the bionic woman goes into a beauty pageant, I mean, that was you know, cringeworthy. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was really cringeworthy. OK, um, and she's singing. What was that? I think she was singing feelings, you know, or something like that. I don't remember or or, or whatever that. um Debbie Boone song was, um, but the, you know, there was tons of cringeworthy stuff in that show, right? I mean, Bigfoot. I I don't even know how many times they did Bigfoot, um, and you know, you would have you know psychics and other stuff, and it was just it was ridiculous, but it was fun. It was the seventies, you know. The seventies the definitely had a lot of cringeworthy stuff. Uh, yeah. Johnny Johnny asked me to watch uh, the Secrets of Isis, and I'm just oh, like, oh yeah, yeah. This? See how mighty Isis. And the sad part is, we just lost her about three three or three months ago. But yeah, that was a Saturday morning cartoon, man. That between that and Shazam. Um, yeah, that was my childhood right there. It was the seventies, running you around know? in platform heels, yeah, <laughs> flying. Now, as I said earlier in the show, it's Charlie's Angels. You know, you got to watch Charlie's mm. Angels. Um, that was a big thing, and um, Battlestar Galactica near the end of the seventies. You know, um, my personal favorite is a show from the seventies that everyone forgets is Quark. Okay, by the people that brought you Get Smart. They did basically Star Trek version of of, of uh, Get Smart on, on on that. So there was lots of stuff from that time frame that I remember watching. But those two shows had the hugest impact on me and 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 what I wanted to be and kind of formed who I am today. What about you, Willow? Um, okay, because I'm a huge X Men fan, uh, I'd have to. <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> D despite the fact that I grew up in foster care, no, it was not Jubilee. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Rogue definitely was the character that Rogue. I yeah. uh, that I related to more was because of the feeling of being isolated and nobody really understanding her. Um, you know, um, not being able to have a decent, you know, relationship with people. Not you know, um, just feeling very lonely and you know i spent a good chunk of my life you know feeling like nobody liked me because of me being strange and weird and um well <laughs> being a dork <laughs> Willow, we gotta get you that white streak we gotta get you that white streak I, I, in your I'm, hey, it's kind of coming <laughs> 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 
<laughs> my gray hair is coming in slowly. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you notice, have you noticed Willow yeah, here? Okay. Well, so it's coming you know. in fast. <laughs> I'm already there. But, uh, I mean, uh, it's funny how now uh, everybody seems to love Velma and think how sexy she is. But, hello. <laughs> <laughs> always, always did always did um but yeah like growing up you know loving all the like the nerdy characters in each series that i get into ninja turtles donatello would be my yes. favorite it was my favorite you know absolutely and, yes willow donatello yes. <laughs> yes if it wasn't for the nerdy characters of, of the series the team would just it would die. fall apart die donatello <laughs> was the best ninja turtle in my opinion <laughs> Donnie is my favorite. Uh, Donnie and Raph. Uh, yeah. Only because Willow, piggyback off what you just said about Donnie, man, I had to chime in here. Um, my bad attitude is Raphael, but like my intelligence is Donatello. Like, yeah, I love Donnie, man. He was just cool, man. He was always inventing stuff and, you know, Saturday morning cartoons, watching uh, TMNT. And uh, how many of you guys remember uh, Police Academy, the cartoon? Oh, dear God. Listen, I run I a mean, Saturday dude, morning. Please, I, I, I do a Saturday morning pod uh Saturday morning cartoon podcast. Willow knows it, and so does so does Brian and Nicole. But yeah, we we don't talk about that that often. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got an even worse one for you if you want to talk Saturday morning cartoons. Go look up something called Super President. Super okay. President? Yeah, you'll be cringed. Okay. It's considered one of the worst cartoons of all time. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah, but yeah. So anyway, Willow, you were saying. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's funny because like, it, like I, I, I did relate to Velma how you know the fact that she was a nerd and she loved it, she loved science and all that. Very well read character, and then but it, it's it's funny how you know now it's everybody thinks that she's like the sexy one out of the group, and I'm just like, where was this when I was growing up? <laughs> I'll, I'll get you an orange sweater, uh, Willow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Uh. And then, but yeah, it's always been the, the nerdy characters and everything that I watched um that i related to the the outcast the more i don't know the guy i guess the quieter one um but uh beast is also one of my favorite characters uh, from x-men yeah. <laughs> anybody else now it's your turn <laughs> my turn yeah um <coughs> So, um, I don't know, when I was a kid, there wasn't a lot of, uh, there, there weren't a lot of people that looked like me. Like, I realized that that's the whole thing. Like, what do you mean? I was like, because I was a big girl and I was just that way. So I guess I gravitated a lot towards people who were like kind of exiled, but who lived a lot in their own, like in their own skin and on their own terms, like. So I was, um, I, I don't know, God, I always loved Rogue. I think that that was probably a, a huge part of like how I got through a lot of things because she was her own person, but she had like that inner turmoil of not mm -hmm. knowing where she fit in and, and having this thing touch that, anybody. that kept her kind yeah. of at bay from other people. And then, um, <coughs> I, when I was a kid, like you really loved gummy bears. So, like I loved gummy bears, but <laughs> but um, when I was a kid, like when I was little, like like little little, and I know this existed. I know it did because I can look it up. But people don't have a clue what I'm talking about. So, um, when I was a kid, I watched every single episode of Kissy Fur probably three thousand times, and there was just something about the fact that he was an orphan and, you know, like there was that like understanding that you don't always have family. That's family. You have people that take you under their wing and I don't know. I just really appreciated it. And I know it existed, but I can't find it anywhere. Like it's on YouTube, but everything's on YouTube. Um, but like, I couldn't find like 
Like I'll ask people and they don't know what I'm talking about. But there are a lot of things that were like Canadian things that I guess we got in, in Michigan that most people in the world didn't get. I don't know. Um, but it was that, I don't know, like, what else was I into? Everybody else into Teen Titans? I was a big no. Raven fan. I looked up to her. The only thing I knew about Teen Titans and my and, and it was when the kids watched Teen Titans Go, and I hate the fuck no. with my very <laughs> pain. I'm sorry. <laughs> not sure if I want to. My son loves Teen Titans Go, but Ooh. I'm a big original Teen Titans fan. I looked up to Raven. I'm I'm 28, so I grew up with Teen cool. Titans. See, for me, the Teen Titans were were back of the actual teen sidekicks of the heroes in DC. Mm-hmm. You know that that George Perez uh, one. That's the Teen Titans that I like. Yeah, that's that's the that was in '82, and uh, Perez Perez's work was seminal to the change of the Titans from from the Teen Titans to just the Titans. Um, and sad note is, is George is dying. Yeah. Um, mm. So, but yeah, yeah uh, I was fortunate. I got to be his handler at a show, and um, we had a long chat about the Titans, and they just he he wanted to change them dramatically, and he did, and they're what they are now. So back, back to you for a minute here. Uh, you want to talk about some of the things that you, you, you've been watching lately? Oh, I get a turn to talk. Okay. Um, <laughs> what have I been watching lately? Um, so I am a paranormal like nut. And so I watched every episode and probably every episode of, the, of A Haunting on a Discovery Plus. Um, so there's like 20 some seasons and I probably watched all of them twice or more. Um, I finished watching that. The new the new one is about a ghost town that she bought in Montana or somewhere. And I'm watching that because they're trying to figure out, you know, whether the land is haunted or the houses are haunted. And I'm listening to EVPs. I'm really weird. I don't know. Um, we watched Rescue by Ruby on Netflix. Um, Oh my God. You went on? So first of all, first of all, you can't put a show with, with, don't give me a dog show. Like, I'm going to cry like a lunatic. Um, And then what was the other thing that made me cry? Oh, a journal by, for Jordan. Brian knows better. Like I, if I have to go to work the next day, he cannot put in a movie that's going to make me cry. It's a great movie, by the way. It's a great movie. It has Michael B. Jordan and. um, It's directed by Denzel Washington. Shantae. Uh, I can't remember her name, but she's beautiful. Um, and so it was a great movie. Um, but yeah, we watched that and they made me cry. And um, Grant Gustin is in Rescued by Ruby. So it's just amazing. And then, so when you think about like movies that kind of touch on finding your family, like they say Rescued by Ruby, it's kind of like the dog really rescued him by rescuing her. It's a true story. It's about a dog that basically every time it got adopted was brought back to the shelter. shelter. (laughs) And so um, once, once they adopt him, like he was going to be a part of the canine unit in uh, Rhode Island. And so they want so badly to adopt this dog, but they're having a hard time training him, and she doesn't seem to respond very well, but he finds things that she responds to and where she fails the test and then she evidently ends up passing it. But it was like this, you know, his wife says, you never cease to amaze me. So instead of treating her like everybody treated you, find a new way. And I'm like, that kind of rang true. Cause I think we, we don't give each other enough, enough uh, credit. And we don't say that everybody learns something differently. Like, you know, when, when Jerome was saying that, everybody in his D group had a master's or higher except for him like what does that have to do with anything it's about where you are mentality wise in life i mean i granted i don't want to spend my days with stupid people but i also <laughs> means i hang out with really, I, know enough of those. I, I, I hang out with really smart people but like you know you hang out with people that <clears throat> d- dis- despite your education you hang out with people that you have similar values to. So like 
why are we together? Like, you know, people are dumbfounded by this. Right? Right. Tell me. Tell me they're not. Like, they're like, this is a test, Brian. Really, it's not because I know why we're together because we're dorks and we found the same. When you find someone that's the same weird as you, okay. People. So, 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 if I make a porn joke here, that would get me in trouble, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, hold not. on. It, it has to be after nine o'clock for that joke. Okay. Yeah, all right. early. Um, HBO. We're, we're, we're different, but the Max that night. That's the best way to say it. Max. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we like similar things, but here's here's what keeps us together. I think is. Brian knows me so well that I deny the fact that he knows me so well. Because he'll be like, you're going to love this. And I'm like, oh, whatever. And then I'm like, you suck. <laughs> now I got to like it. I don't want to like it. You know? We, like, because he was right in the end, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, we watched that first episode of Halo. And she's not a gamer or anything like that. And she doesn't know anything about Halo. No, but she thought the show was quite interesting. I thought it was interesting. I thought, well, it just gave me enough. Where's that at? Enough to be interested. Halo's on Paramount Plus. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm glad that you're talking about Halo now because uh, I've watched it with my husband. We both love the game. We both love uh, reading the books. And I, uh, you guys saying that, it, 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 how do you guys feel about <laughs> the first episode? Knowing You got knowing my husband's nothing? opinion. Okay. Well, knowing nothing like essentially other than what the kids told me which was sporadic and didn't make any sense <laughs> um like it gave me enough about it gave me just enough to want to watch again i didn't need a backstory i don't need any of the i don't need canon i don't need any of that for me to be able to go forward and and i don't care if he took his helmet off like i don't I don't care. Like I think they're taking the uh, the approach that that Tom feels like they they have the lore of the Halo characters, but they're not following the lore that's already there. They're kind of making their own lore. Yeah, yeah. They, there's but, actually an interview with these guys who actually said they did not look at the video game. Like they they were not looking at the video game as this is our story per se, right? Like, but they have the world, they have the designs, they have the key pieces that you need. Um, but they were not going to just come in and adapt the game. I felt like artistically, like I'm a big, I really like the way things look, the sets, which, which is like my whole thing about my whole problem with anything Zack Snyder does. It's like, turn on the fucking lights. But, um, <laughs> and I don't mean noir. I mean, like just turn on the lights, but like, this was a really like, um, I don't want to say colorful. It was like they used color in a way that was important and the lighting was, I mean, I, I enjoyed it was the great. way it looked. It was great sci-fi. If that's what you're into, Jerome, I think you'll like it. So, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not a big, I'm not a Just big video game anything. Like throw away everything that you know about Halo up to until this point and they, they just, yeah, they're, they're making but isn't their whole... that, But isn't that like, a lot of the things that they've made and like how do you make a how do you really make a movie out of a video game well see like, that's why most of them fail for the most part. I, I mean like you is, have to kind of create a world within it look, like sonic, that some, tells a story because sonic, sonic is a good example because sonic is the highest right, grossing video yeah. game uh movie uh right now what you mean the Mario Brothers wasn't that big hit? <laughs> Dude, oh, wait, wake me up when we get a legit Mario Brothers movie, but it's gonna be too expensive to make. We're never gonna get a legit one. Uh, I mean, I guess, like, I'm not a gamer, so I don't really know, but a lot of people, like the kids, the like, I think I've watched somebody play Silent Hill, and I'm like, well, how do you make a movie out of that? And that movie scared the crap out of you, and it scared me just. Just like weird stuff scares me. Was I don't it, wasn't Doom popular? And what was the other one? What was the one with the um, uh, Umbrella <coughs> Corporation? Resident um, Evil. Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it Resident Evil pop? I mean, didn't they make a boatload of money? They've gotten what five, six. Uh, they sequels? make money and they keep making them. Those were good films too, like especially off the video game. Like I played all of them. You know, I was a huge Resident Evil fan playing the video games and stuff. I remember playing the first one, I believe, was on uh, PlayStation 1 and then going forward. 
Uh, yeah, dude, I thought the movies were great. I, I really did. I thought they did every character that they had in the games. I thought it was very well played. The Umbrella Corporation was a really cool uh, aspect in life, you know, of like, hey, this is what could really happen. Hey, we're mixing chemicals or, hey, we're going to create something like Resident Evil to me was just uh, modern day life because that's the thing about um, the world, man. We're always creating something, some damn disease, some damn airborne thing, you know, and it's only a matter of time before, you know, something hits the fan. So, yeah. I mean, if you want a legit Halo or a Resident Evil show, it's the Netflix series that's coming out with Lance Reddick. Um, yes. that, that one's going to be more on the level of what the game is. Uh, the newest movie that came out was as close to the video game as you're going to get right now. Um, but the ones with Melia, um, they were great action movies, but yeah. they were great Resident Evil movies, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. It's kind of like how I feel about the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Great Christopher Nolan movies, but not great Batman films. That's just my opinion. I think uh, the multiverse. You have to almost keep a multiverse mindset when watching your, you know, your favorite property being made from oh, yeah. one medium to the next. Because if not, you're just going to be pissed off. It's like I had friends of mine. We used to watch Smallville, and I knew guys who knew like pre-crisis continuity, post-crisis, New Fifty Two, all that stuff. And it's like you know. You could totally pick those apart, and then just have to go. You know what? It is what it is. Um, Lex was never that cool, but Michael Rosenbaum made him really fucking cool. Anything else with the yeah. song though? I think I feel like everybody knows the lyrics. No, the I mean, Smallville song. And the thing is about that Smallville song. That song was out before Smallville even came. I know it was perfect. It was the perfect song though. When I first heard it, I thought it was a U two track. <laughs> Like straight up, I was like, "Man, they're you two's at it again." Doesn't I remember go. watching. I remember watching that pilot when it came on, and I'm I'm an old Superman fan, like you said, pre crisis, cross crisis, and and I watched it. and I went, "Okay, it's a new take on Superman. I can handle this. This isn't too bad." I just didn't like the whole cream corn capital of the nation. I thought that was a little much, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like they shot in Indiana with the corn. Yeah. I, I just want to make a bold prediction right here, and you guys are going to hear it first just because Tom is on the show. Oh. Tom... Oh. No, hold on. Hold on. Tom, I, I, I I'm feel ready. the love there for you. I'm ready. I'm ready. Tom, Tom has a, a comic series uh, about Oz that is so ripe for a series that when it comes out, you guys will, will know Tom before he becomes you know mr big, big guy but seriously that that's that's a comic series i think you guys should read because i have a feeling with it i'm gonna say right now in the next five to ten years that becomes a series so tom's gonna follow well, ben england we, we almost had it as a series it was it was in hollywood's hands uh Ooh. and it was all going the right way uh, until we got to the very, very top with the guys that said yes or no. <laughs> the money. Then, it was the money then, guys. Yeah. And so we had one guy who basically was like, yo, I don't get it. And I'm like, yo, I can't help you anymore because I have an entire thing storyboarded for you in comics. It's right here. I don't know what you don't get. The other guy basically was Westerns don't sell. And I'm like, do you understand the history of Hollywood and and where Hollywood is right now and where it's going? And do you understand that all of the, do you understand that Star Wars is a Western? Uh, and it, it just it was Westerns don't that, sell, dude. And I'm like, it, oh my god, that, Westerns yeah, that, don't sell. And aren't they in the midst of Yellowstone in 1883 I, right now? I mean, and Mandalorian, and and Mandalorian is a Western. Dog is nominated for an Oscar. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and and Mandalorian is a Western. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, it's it's and the guy that was helping me sell it, he's like, look, this is Hollywood, man. We went we, we tried a ladder and we didn't get to the top. So now we have to go try a different ladder and, and, and do it again. It's just about finding the right person that that understands the property and can then push it 
you know, to the, to the top of the list. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that that says no, 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 and then they finally get a yes, and it's been sure. like that for years. Listen, sure. listen oh, I, I, I'm, I'm in Massachusetts, and what came from Massachusetts? The tick. Okay, so it and 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 I'm 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 just down the road from Northampton, which is where the turtles came from. So it will happen to us. Tom, okay. if there's a way that you can get some Elliot on board with it. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm, I have already tried to lay. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to start sending him Oz books. Like every month, I'm just going to send him another one <laughs> until he says yes. Uh, and, and then you said we'll something about that, that you that uh, you like the Dario, but she's a, a bit old for a certain. She, she would be too old at this point, um, I think, because our Dorothy would. I mean, not that she's not like an attractive woman, but she's like in her 30s now, and our Dorothy would need to be like early 20s especially if you're talking about a series that fingers crossed would run for you know four or five seasons as as the character gets older um so yeah i, I like the dario a lot but there's probably going to be plenty of of younger up-and-coming uh actresses that that would fit the bill yeah, i have somebody like i have somebody in mind i don't know if you know who she is but i'll, I'll give you her name jenna ortega mm -mm. Okay, she was. Uh, she does the voice of one of the characters on Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous on Netflix, but she's also in um, this new horror movie that just came out from A24 called X, but she was also in. Um, what else was she in? Uh, we just watched her in something. And you said, that's Jenny Ortega. She plays the voice of blah, blah, blah. What the hell is it? Oh, man. But there's a show on HBO Max that she's in, or a movie, I believe, on HBO Max. But just go look her up. I think she's uh, she's very up and coming. That's a shot, by the way. Um, Jenna Ortega. She's in the new Scream. Yeah, she's yes. in the new Scream movie. There was, there was a girl on, I'm trying to think of her name. Uh, she was on that Glow show. Uh, a few years ago, um, Brit, it was Brit Baron, uh, I think is her name. Um, and she was like the daughter of the, the, the old dude who was running the glow show. Um, I liked her a lot. Uh, she, I think could probably run right into that role, uh, pretty easily. I think it was Brit, Brit Baker, Brit Baron. I think it was Brit Baron. Brit Baker yeah. is Baker. I'm thinking A W D M D. Oh, that's no. why I'm getting them confused. Yeah, she's she's the wrestler, right? No, it's not her. It's Britt yeah. Baron. Britt Baron. Yeah. Yeah, Britt, Britt Baron. Um, she played Justine. Yeah. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, I I I thought she kind of could potentially look the part. She's got the rebel attitude that you know a gunfighter would need, and um. That was the only one we actually had at the time. It was it. We were talking about potentially Catherine McPhee taking on the role. This was, and this again, you're talking about going back like almost ten years now. Um, but she had just come off of uh, whatever show she was on Nashville or something, um, and so she was one of the one of the actresses that was being talked about as taking on the Dorothy role. And I was like, oh uh, yeah, uh, I like her. But now we're we're ten years down the line, so we kind of have to you know start all the the casting over again with whoever decides they want to take it. Yeah. Ursa Minor, I think would be an awesome, uh, film. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and, um, it's, it's for me, it's Chloe Grace Moretz. Like it's, it's the perfect casting. Um, I even, I, I made up these fake movie posters with her on it that I post every now and then just to try and like tag her and be like, Oh, you know, <laughs> you can do this if you want to do it. I mean, it's fine. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, although she's already played a were character, she was a werewolf in in Dark Shadows, so she might yeah. have uh, she might have she might be Dark over Shadows. that now. I love that movie. I love Johnny Depp. I love Johnny Depp before he got weird. Yeah, before before he got weird. Weird. Johnny Depp's best weird. movie is is Nightmare on Elm Street, just like <laughs> Kevin Bacon. I love that. I just love the Friday fact 13. that Tom just keeps bringing up Johnny Depp as for, yeah, for just Nightmare Johnny on Elm Depp Street. I mean, can we just honor the fact that Johnny Depp was an amazing character? He had the he had the he had the cut top. Why don't guys wear the laying in bed? He had the coolest. He had the coolest. Well, they do when they're football players. Or they're gay <laughs> men. He sucked into the water. Man, the man is like, what are the football feelings? You know what is a Boys good need to bring back the cutoffs. You know what's a good trying, Johnny Mama, Depp movie? I'm trying. You are a trying. good Johnny Depp movie that I think is underrated um, is Nick of Time. I actually like that film. 
that's a good movie. I think one of his best roles too was uh, Sleepy Hollow. Thank you. I love Sleepy Hollow. I think Hollow. he played a great Ichabod Crane. I he really thought did. I so thought like Johnny Depp, did, yeah, creepy, eerie, yeah, yeah just yeah. really, really great Ichabod yeah. Crane. But yes, before he got weird, before he yes. was, before, before he got weird, he was, weird. was already okay. weird. So, it, it was when he got weird. Was that around the time where he he married uh, the bitch? No, the blonde chick, was it the blonde chick? Johnny Depp got weird when he went to bed with with uh, Tim Burton and started doing all these damn movies. Yes. They're all the same. They're all the same. Edward Scissorhands was the last like quote unquote weird movie I'd ever want to watch. I love Edward. I'm not Edward Scissorhands, hands down, best Johnny Depp movie outside. Crybaby. Uh, outside, outside, oh outside of Crybaby. Outside of Crybaby. I Cry kind of like yes. Like, yes. Yes. Thank you, Nicole. But I'll be honest. Like he got right when he started doing all this stuff with Tim Burton is when he started like overplaying things and they just got weird. I'm like, okay, give me Gene Wilder. I don't need your weird ass Charlie and the chop. I don't need your weird ass Charlie. Like, okay, it, the Charlie it, and the Chocolate Factory yeah. is a whole different. That was like, weird. That, weird. that was Johnny Depp weird. weird. Yeah. That was right, Johnny I'll Depp give weird. You that one. That was weird. And then Sweeney Todd. Him, him playing that role was weird. But yes, him as Crybaby. Oh, oh phenomenal. He, he phenomenal it. He role. It, which actually was a spoof. I love the prison scene when he's in jail and he's got the one single tear and they're playing the song. You have to and find just... out that that was actually a spoof movie. It wasn't yeah. actually like it was just it yeah. was like a joke on pretty much uh Greece. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, here, here you go, Tom. Get get Johnny Depp like to play a villain in one of your one of your books. <laughs> uh, I have no problem. Like Johnny, Johnny, Johnny can do whatever he wants. Johnny, I know you're watching. <laughs> no, you guys of course you're watching. Right you're now. you're welcome to do anything you role. want with with any role that you. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You know what oh, I like? No. I, one of one of Johnny's uh, uh, lesser known mm -hmm. movies is called The Ninth Gate. Do you guys ever see that? Oh wow! Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Yeah. Roman I, have, I love Johnny Depp, and I haven't seen that. That's sad. Yes, ninth, ninth Gate is a cool movie. Yes, absolutely. That was a good movie. Yeah. Did any of you guys see I Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? Yep. Well, yeah. That was I couldn't, great. No, that was, I couldn't. I tried. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't get in. You know, I'm not the the whole drug thing and all that drinking and all. It's like that's just not me. Um. So it's it's a it's a culture and a mindset that just doesn't. I, I don't. What about the what is? I think if you live that culture for a while, I think you can appreciate. Uh, fear and loathing, but yeah, yeah, like if you said, you Tom. Know. Yeah, it's just it's 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 a well, weird sorry. movie, Too man. It's, the box for me. it's a really weird movie, man. You have to really watch it like multiple times to really understand that film. I think. Well, like, well it's like was... it's like uh, uh, what's the Leaving Las Vegas with Nick Cage, right? Like that. Oh, yeah. That's a drinking <laughs> movie, but like it's just. That's not about drinking. That's about a guy just destroying himself. So you know, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was that comic that book movie did? that that Johnny Depp did from Hell? From Hell, yeah. yeah. From, from Hell. Really yeah, oh. From Hell was an Alan Who's this co-star in that? Uh, blonde chick. Who's this co-star? Uh, Heather Graham. Yes. Uh, and then he did the uh, Butcher. I hate that movie. The Barber of Seville. The oh, Barber, man. Jazz. I mean, dude, that was legit. Like, was I, I love that. He, a great, great storyline in that. Um, I love how he set up his little shop to shave him, slit him, slide him down. Is that a thing? Shave him, <laughs> slit him, slide him? Like, I mean, that's what yeah. he did. Now. All right. It is Pr now. Hold on. Print that on a shirt. That's, that's. <laughs> right? Yeah. Thank, thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Shave him, <laughs> slit him, slide him. Okay, I mean, so I just looked it up. Secret window of Johnny Depp. Window window was, oh, that that was just a writer. Seen. He's the, the writer and stocks on that movie. It was okay. So similar movie, better movie was the girl on the third floor. Yeah, <laughs> that's oh, good. With, with Sam Punk. Oh. With Sam we're going CM Punk here. Yeah. What? Now, now we're talking my alley now. That was, was that dark was alley. a really good movie. Was that oh, not a good movie I though? It, it, it really was. The girl on the third floor was a great, great film. Um, the the scene that really messed me up the most was when uh Phil Brooks, CM Punk came out and he had all the cuts. Um, um yeah. Uh for an independent film, that. that's what I'm gonna throw it under as under that umbrella, independent film. It didn't make you know big headlines. Um, but man, I really thought as a huge CM Punk fan, 
for Philip Brooks to come in and do uh, a film, um, man, he couldn't have done a better film. That film was, it was weird. It was weird. Uh, it was very uh, psychologically damaging, I think, because I think I think we can all agree. If you move into a new house and you're fixing said new house up, um, you know, you don't really know what you, what you're getting, you know, in that house, you know. And I think I think CM Punk did a great job uh, doing the role that he did. And yeah, the girl on the third floor was extremely creepy. Speaking of creepy houses, this one is a creepy house. We found handprints up in our upstairs. It's true. Oh, handprints with paint. Yeah, we live in a haunted house. But hey, they don't bother us. We don't bother them. They do their thing. We do ours. So it is. Well, hey, that, that's a good idea. Paranormal life for um, another episode. We'll have to come back together and talk Absolutely. about like haunted house movies and stuff. Tom, are you down for that? I'm just saying, if you guys move out of your house, just put handprints like in paint <laughs> to scare the other tenants that come into the house. I'm just saying, because they scared the shit out of me when I walked up and I got in that cubby little space and there was handprints. All of our, so, all, all of our, uh, what is it, spoons or forks? Uh, forks first, spoons last. Uh, forks no, went, no, disappeared. No, no, butter knives. knives. Butter, butter knives. knives. All of our butter knives disappeared the, the first knives, week we moved in, in, in here and then we found them in our loft. In this dark, deep closet, wrapped yeah, up creepy. in very our, creepy. um, we use a little mat thing to throw our dishes on once we clean them to let them oh, air dry. God. We found them wrapped up in that. We put them away, yeah. and then we magically found them. And now forks have disappeared, and spoons have disappeared. Very and, creepy. Very creepy. Home. Yeah, they don't bother us. We don't bother them. So it is what it is. We should say myself. Okay, so on Wednesday I do a show called The Sideshow, and I uh, and also Cryptid Crunch. So you guys are welcome to join me if you guys want to talk about creepy stuff on either. Oh, show. about it. Sure. About it. <laughs> Tell you the story about how we lost our cell phones for three hours. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. So quick story: we lose our cell phones. Like we we were literally playing music on my cell phone in the kitchen, and both of our cell phones are on the table. Hers is on the charger. And long story short, we go to the basement and smoke cigarette, which is where we're at now in the SWS set. And we come back upstairs and both of our cell phones are gone. Missing. We find these cell phones like three hours later house across the street to, to call, call them. them just to try to hear a damn ringtone. We find them in the closet of Wrapped our bedroom in, witch's in her witch's fucking costume. Yeah. Weird. This town. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Very we're not on our cell phones. Okay. Uh, yeah. Where did you guys get the witch's costume from? Oh, I bought it from uh, Ron's Halloween store. Thank you. Ron's Halloween store here in Marion, Indiana, which okay. they don't have that anymore. Ron's Halloween store has closed. Unfortunately, so he made you feel like it was Halloween. He too. really did. But yeah, it was really weird, man. Like it was just like all of a sudden you come downstairs, your phones are, uh, my phone's playing music. You can hear it. Music Her phone's stops. on charge on and the kitchen table. Missing. We come downstairs to smoke a quick cigarette, take a couple shots, and I'm telling you, go back upstairs, phone. Are morning, gone, and we have like, to bang on my in-laws' doors just to. Hey, can we use your phone to call our <laughs> cell phones? My parents live across the street from us, and and mom, she's very much into witchcraft and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So she's just like, oh yeah, no, no. My problem. grandmother no was problem. a gypsy, so it was just really weird. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling it, and calling it, and calling it, and calling it, and all of a sudden, here's our cell phones in our bedroom closet, wrapped up in a witch's cloak. And honestly, uh, in the bedroom, I love that you have a show. If you want to come over to our house oh. and check out our upstairs and uh, see about all the weird stuff that goes on up there, more than welcome. Oh man, you guys are definitely. I, I need to have you guys on Cryptic Crunch. That that would be awesome. Okay. Well, <laughs> We'd be a hundred percent down for that. Well, on that happy note, I have to leave, guys. Yeah, well, we are going to end the show anyway. So uh, I want to thank everyone for being on. And Jerome, uh, where can people find you? I am the co-host of Saturday Morning Cartoons on the HWWS network, along with uh, te Classic Television Smackdown. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. And somewhere in the deep, dark side of the web, there is a MySpace page <laughs> out there. With oh, the deep, dark web. Yeah, dark web. So, yes, sir. Appreciate that. <laughs> okay. That's where you can find me, folks. 
All right. Thank you very much, Jerome. It's good seeing you as always. Uh, you. Keep in touch. Absolutely. Uh, Shane, uh, we want to thank you for coming on again. Uh, I want to thank Leonard for hooking me up with you because we hit it off right, you know, right from the oh. start. Uh, so where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, I do a monthly uh, podcast, SWS Shoot Machine. You can find me on YouTube at SWS Shoot Machine. You can check me out on Facebook at SWS Shoot Machine. And you can uh, add me on my personal account, uh, Shane Eugene Timmons. So you guys check me out on that. Uh, Lenny, much respect, brother. I will see you April 9th, my good friend. Also, can right. I say something real Jeez. fast? Uh, Tom, I love your ears. They're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Yeah, and uh, when really you guys well. check up Tom's books, definitely uh, leave me a review and leave Tom a review. I, I love to hear what people think of his writing. Yeah, man, she's huge into reading big, and stuff like that. So, books. like, yeah, she loves her books. Big. So, Is anything Tom, fantasy, thank you, I'm man, by it. the way, for that, too. Sure. I also love your back. Fantastic. L Leonard, gotcha. as always, great to have you on. Where can the good folks find you? Thanks for having me. Um, you can find me on YouTube under Leonard Pig. You can see me on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash Leonard Pig. That's with two Gs. Um, uh, Sexy Beard Club Press 2.0 uh, is the new Facebook page. <laughs> and you can check that out at your convenience. And uh, you can also find me on talenthouse.com. So I'm all over the place. And a new episode of Canary Currency just dropped yesterday on uh, Amazon Prime. So Christian Cash. Nice. Tom, it's always a pleasure to have you and your ears on. Yeah, man. Always good. Course, yeah, it was that Githra behind you there, right? Yep. Githra, of course. Of course. Everybody knows I'm 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 down with the gods pretty much 24-7. Yeah. So here. what do you have going on right now that you want to promote? Uh we are about to launch uh Ursa Minor on April 2nd. So we, next Saturday. Next Saturday we will be we will be live. Uh Horror book, Ursa Minor is uh, vampires, werewolves, um, all the blood, claws, and fangs that we love. None of the sparkly, angsty <laughs> things that we don't love. Um, uh, it's, it's the 10-year anniversary for Ursa Minor, so uh, we're going to be celebrating it all year long with uh, three Kickstarter campaigns uh, to do a complete story arc for the book. Um, and there'll be other things going along as well as we as we head into it. Um, but uh, Ursa Minor is our, our focus right now, so yeah. Yeah, and of course, people can find you uh, bigdoginc.com and there. Big Dog Inc. Yeah, jump on, on jump on Facebook. Look up Big Dog Inc. You can you can friend me up as well. If you do the Twitter and the Instagram, it's just BDI Comics. That's where we are over there as well. So yeah, we're we're around. We're around. That's awesome. Well, as we do every show, it's time to ring that bell. Thanks for jo joining us, everyone. Bye.